Welcome everyone to Pro Player Stadium in Miami, the Micron DC Combo. From the Big Ten, the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers, and from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. Good evening, everybody. Holidays. Great to have you with us tonight. Kevin Harlan with former Penn State All-America and Super Bowl champion with the Oakland Raiders, lineman Dave Rowe. Great to have you with us tonight. Craig Sager will be manning the sideline for us and getting you up to date on a lot of great stories surrounding this game. But let's talk about how these two teams got here. First of all, the Wolfpack in North Carolina State. Well, it takes a lot of ingredients to get here, Kevin, but it starts with a coach, and that's Chuck Amato. Tremendous enthusiasm. You have to love the way he coaches this football game. And then you go to a quarterback, a freshman quarterback, who's just unbelievable. Threw for over 3,000 yards, only 10 interceptions. And you couple that with a fantastic wide receiver, just the sophomore, Corin Robinson. And I mean, this guy is open all the time. 62 catches, had over 1,000 yards. And Kevin, one interesting fact, he had 14 games. He's had over 100 yards receiving. That's unbelievable. In the form of Torrey Holt, another great All-America wide receiver now at the world champion St. Louis Rams. And I'm guessing that offense is the reason Minnesota's here as well. Absolutely. We do have a 1,000-yard rusher in Ron Johnson. He is a tremendous threat all over the field. 59 catches over 18 yards a catch. But they also had a thousand yard rusher in Tellus Redmond. He averages four and a half yards a carry. And you couple that with a great coach, Glenn Mason, who did an outstanding job and got a lot out of his team. They had a fantastic year. So it's the Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota from the Big Ten against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State from the ACC. And our kickoff is next on TBS. The MicronPC.com Bowl on the Superstation is brought to you by MicronPC.com, your single point of contact for all of your technology needs. Featuring award-winning desktops, notebooks, and servers, as well as web design, web hosting, and online training. MicronPC.com, think beyond the box. And by Rogaine Extra Strength for Men. A great holiday scene here in Miami. It is 73 degrees. There's a bit of a breeze. Rain is in the forecast, but uh, I would say compared to the upper Midwest in the frozen country that these folks are used to being in, this is not all that bad at all. And a good group has come down from Minneapolis and St. Paul. North Carolina State will receive. Minnesota will kick off as we send it downstairs and say good evening to Craig Sager. Well, Minnesota's two-sided offense that you heard Dave talk about with 1,000-yard rusher Tellus Redmond and 1,000-yard receiver Ron Johnson is about to meet NC State's triumvirate on defense. Three players unprecedented on the same team in the same year with over 100 tackles leading the way. Linebacker, LeVar, 166 tackles. That was tops in the nation. He is joined by Adrian Wilson, the strong safety with 106, and Antonio Burnett with 105. When Chuck Amato took over the pro program, he promised the fans an exciting trip. Well, I'll tell you one thing. They set school records for completions and attempts. But on defense, there's a triple weapon three that's made big plays time after time after time. Kevin? All right, Craig, thank you very much. North Carolina State comes in at 7-4. and four. The Golden Gophers of the University of Minnesota come in at 6-5. and five. Both teams in their respective conferences Won four and lost four. And there you see first-year coach Chuck Amato after spending 18 years with Bobby Bowden down at Florida State. And the coach for the Golden Gophers is Glenn Mason. He was a head coach at Kent State, head coach at the University of Kansas for nine years and turned around that program. Last year, he was the Big Ten Dave McClain of the year. And this year, they had high hopes, Dave Rowe. They were 5-2 yeah. and two to start this season, but they finished with three consecutive losses and had to beat Iowa in the last game of the season to make the postseason. Yeah, they really, they were smelling the roses, so to speak, in the Big Ten, and then all of a sudden the season kind of caught up with them. But I'll tell you this, they can move the football up and down the field. It starts right there with Travis Cole, number seven. The field is a little bit soggy, as you might expect, although there is a sand base for this field, and the uh, drainage here is amongst the best in any stadium in the country and this will be a very busy stadium the orange bowl is a couple days away yeah. but before that there's an nfl playoff yeah, game here miami. saturday yeah you got miami here saturday so it's going to get a lot of uh, work but i'll tell you i was amazed i almost thought they resodded the field down the center it is an outstanding field so the gophers will kick off and they take a look 
at Preston Greening, who has had a wonderful season for the Golden Gophers. And there's a lot of speed back there for North Carolina State, led by Corin Robinson, one of the top punt returners in the ACC and number two in kickoff returns. Adrian Wilson is at his side. It was interesting talking with Chuck Amato. He said, Corin Robinson ought to be back there returning punts. You want to make All-American? That's how you do it, return punts, big plays. So Greening is ready. The Golden Gophers against the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. And here we go from 12 Player Stadium in Miami. It'll be taken by Robinson at the two-yard line. And reversing field and dancing his way up past the 25. And down at about the 27-yard line, a return of 26 yards and tackled on the play by Jack Brewer. Philip Rivers is the record-setting freshman quarterback for the North Carolina State. Boy, and I've looked for Philip Rivers all season long to get that freshman wide look. I mean, you think a year ago, Kevin, he was in high school. Yeah. And now he's out here playing a bowl game. He has been fantastic. He has led this team. He's not been under a whole lot of pressure all season. Chuck Amato's taken that off of him. He's been sacked 35 times, but really has not bent underneath the pressure. Outstanding. Good vision downfield. From the 27-yard line, first and 10 for the Wolfpack, and a quick throw outside is incomplete. He was aiming for his receiver, co-captain Eric Leak. It'll be second down and 10. Let's take a look at the backfield with Robinson and the fullback Roberts, a converted linebacker. Corin Robinson, Willie Wright, and they just threw to Eric Leak. On the line, the tackles are Borum and Colmer. The guards, Brown and Poole in the center, is Derek Green. It'll be second down and 10 for North Carolina State with four receivers to pull. Seven little shovel pass caught by Ray Robinson right into the teeth of Greg White on the defensive line of Minnesota. Nice play, no gain. It'll be third down and 10. The defense, the tackles are White and Schlecht in the defensive end. One side, Greg White and Karan Riley, who is one of the best in the country. Linebackers, Hall, Hoffman, and Mesereau. In the secondary, Leanne Griffin, Sims, third down and 10 from the 27. There's a block and oh. interception. Wow, what a play. The ricochet off the receiver, and it's picked up on the play by Justin Hall, his first career interception, and it comes in the postseason down here in Miami. Well, you talk about being in the right place at the right time. This is a screen pass. It's going to go over here, fake to the right. Now he's going to turn around. Watch, it just bounces off. And there's there's Justin Hall, number 38. He's right there. The ball just falls right in his hands. Field position, 24-yard line. Wow, Minnesota ought to capitalize. So they come out with Travis Cole, who is a junior from Lake Oswego, Oregon. Redmond in the backfield, four receivers from the 23 of North Carolina State. And the handoff goes to Redmond, breaking a tackle, then brought down by White. And Wilson, a gain of eight on the play, bringing up second down and two. And the rest of the offense, Redmond will be the single back most of the game with Johnson, Jones, Keller, and Utech as his receivers and tight end. The tackles, Heyer and Cuppy. The guards, Burns and Roth. And the All-America center is Ben Hamilton. Second down and two, shy of the 15 with Redmond in the backfield. And he gets the call and brought down from behind by Brian Jamison, who is a junior and a close to a first down, will be the Golden Gophers. Getting the ball deep in territory because of an interception. Jamison and Smith are the ends. Fisher along with Ricky Fowler on the defensive line in this uh, 43 look. They've got White, Burnett, and LeVar Fisher. Fisher, one of the best tacklers in all of college football. The cornerbacks, Williams and Walker, and the safeties, Wilson along with Holt. Terrence Holt is the brother of Torrey Holt, as we talked about before, who is the great wide receiver with the St. Louis Rams and the former record-setting wide receiver with North Carolina State. You see that Glenn Mason's got about, oh, maybe the half length of a football for a first down. Well, if you're Minnesota right now in that huddle, you're thinking big man on big man, just blow him off the line. Glenn Mason doesn't want to do anything fancy in here. I think that Minnesota felt that they could come out here, control the line of scrimmage. If you're in the other huddle on the other side of the ball in NC State, you're saying get penetration, hold him to a field goal in this situation. Don't allow him to throw the big one. See if Travis Cole might pull that football out. 
third down, short one, with the ball resting at the North Carolina State 13-yard line, double tight ends for Travis Cole, who took over the starting quarterback job in the fifth game. And Cole will take it himself. Dave, you're prophetic, and I think he's got the first down, budging his way down near the 12. Well, when you're behind a player like Ben Hamilton, the big yeah. center, I mean, that's not a hard guess. Ben Hamilton, number 55, center All-American. He can drive off the football. His dad played in the NFL with the Vikings. Absolutely. Watch this. Look at the look at the line block right there. Just drive, crunch, move those feet. Ah, I love it. <laughs> I know you That's do. where I love to play. <laughs> <laughs> so at the 12, and Glenn Mason getting this great field position with an interception. They've got three receivers from the North Carolina State 12. It's first down and 10. Travis Cole with Redmond in the backfield, and that's who gets the call, and a block by UTEP. The oh, and a great touchdown run by Tellus Redmond, his seventh rushing touchdown of the season, banging in from 12 yards away, and the Golden Gophers on top early in the game. Did you see that block by UTEP, number 82, the tight end? He carried his man in the end zone. That was unbelievable. I bet he had his man 10 yards off the line of scrimmage. Number 82, tight end. Talk about driving. Watch this. Drive him off the line. The back can't even get off. Look at this. He's driving him downfield. Runner runs right on by him. Tremendous block. Dan Nystrom will try the extra point. He is 31 of 33 in that category this season. And a high snap, but pulled down nicely. The snap on that play came from freshman Peter Pruden. But a 12-yard touchdown run after the Minnesota interception. It's 7-0, the Golden Gophers. Redman, the sophomore from Grapevine, Texas, just gives Minnesota a 7-0 lead with a 12-yard touchdown run. Well, it was unbelievable. LeVar Fisher's number 44. Watch him get locked up right in there. Now watch now. He's not going to get off the block play across the face. He gets driven downfield. And look at that. Fisher can't even get off him. That's their leading tackler, 166 tackles. Boy, that was a tremendous block. And you text the fella, he was a wide receiver. Right, and a red shirt as well. There exactly. was also a good block on that play by wide receiver Jermaine Mays, who was also with UTEC. And you can see a look at UTEC right there. And the interception by Justin Hall, his first career interception. He is a senior from Bloomington. Set up that great Minnesota Golden Gopher field position. Preston Greening will kick off from the 35-yard line. Second time he's booted it. And picked up by Robinson at about the 13-yard line. Got a block from Wilson. Runs outside and spun around nicely on the play by Mike Lehan. A 16-yard return. Lehan with the tackle right there. And really important now for Rivers to calm down, get in that huddle. They've just been scored upon. It was a mistake. You know, a, a tip pass just bounced in the right place. Rivers using that 11 games that he's played already, using that experience. He needs to get in there and just take his team quietly downfield, get a little bit more confidence in his offense. It's really an interesting story. He left, got out of high school at the semester last December and then participated in spring drills in Raleigh with North Carolina State a year ago. Ray Robinson in the backfield, three wide receivers deployed at the state 28-yard line. Robinson gets the call brought down by Riley for a one-yard gain and also Jimmy Henry coming in from the secondary. Henry's a good one, a junior from Detroit. It'll be second down and nine. Yeah, they use Jimmy Henry number six in that nickel defense when they have five defensive backs, and he gets a lot of penetration. You know, you mentioned about uh, Phillip Rivers. I asked Chuck Amato, I said, how did you ever get him out of Alabama? <laughs> I mean, that's Mr. Alabama football, right? right. High school player. He said, said, I talk so fast, he said he couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> second down nine from the 29 outside. It goes to Leak. He gets a block ahead, which is a good one, and finally brought down by Karan Riley at about the 43-yard line, a gain of 14 on the play. Boy, two nice outstanding. block by Peterson. Yeah, two good block play. Outside, it's a screen. Watch the block right in there. And this one right here, that's the one that's going to get him. Now, just line up that blocker, get that yardage. That's a great call. Good call. It takes the pressure off your offensive line. Throw that little slip screen out there and then get positive yards for it. Up to the 43. They brought in Derek Roberts, who now shifts and will become the up back in the eye. First down and 10 yards to go. Gophers on top with the rushing touchdown. Robinson gets the call. Brought down beautifully from behind by Justin Hall. Flying through. He's already picked off a pass tonight and comes up with a great play right there. Well, you want those linebackers to be aggressive. And a lot of teams like to blitz on the run, what they call a run blitz. 
Watch number 38, left of your screen. He's going to get right in the backfield. Look how quickly he comes back in there. Shooting through a gap. Once he reads his key that it's a run, he's coming up to make the tackle. Roberts remains. Shotgun formation for the freshman quarterback, Rivers. Second down and 10, shy of the 44-yard line. And we hit as he throws. Hits. Incomplete across the middle, looking for Corin Robinson. There was great pressure coming up the middle. Riley was there, along with Craig White. Yeah, the, brush, the pressure from, was from the outside. Watch Rivers stand here. He looks, he looks. Now watch how quickly when he sees him, quick release. You see the pressure in his face. But that's one that he should have completed. That was a, he was wide open when coming across the middle. You got to make that one. Big down here, third down and 10. Third down and 10 from the 43-yard line of North Carolina State with four receivers. And again, Rivers in the shotgun. They snap by Derek Green. Good time. Here comes Riley chasing Rivers. He's got to get down to the 47-yard line. He'll be shy of the first down, perhaps. It'll be very, very close. Justin Hall nailed him. Now, Rivers is 6'5", but moved pretty well that time, and they're going to have to take a measurement. You know what really, would have really helped Rivers had the markers been on this side of the field? Because Rivers knows. You see the pressure. Watch. It's going to come back side. Now, look. Rivers doesn't look like he's really running, but he's outrunning the end on the outside. Now, right there, he sees where he has to go up. He sees the pressure coming. I think if he had been able to see the marker, I think he could have dove for the first down. One good thing he did, though, he went head first exactly. as opposed to feet first because they marked the ball back further when you go feet first. Exactly right. And don't be surprised if Chuck Amato doesn't try to set a tone here and go for it on fourth down. He's that kind of coach. He's got a lot of flair. Used to play at North Carolina State, getting out in 1969. Yeah, I asked him yesterday, I said, how's a coach get out of Easton, Pennsylvania and come to NC State? How do you miss out on Penn State? He said, I love that South. You Nittany Lions are always <laughs> asking the same doggone questions. He is shy of the first down. And he's got to go uh, perhaps the length of the football. I thought Rivers was going to tough haul time out. He's still out he there. He looked like it, did yeah. yeah. He's still out there. He's saying, hey, I, I think we ought to go for it, coach. What do you think? I think you ought to go. Hey, it's a bowl game. You've got the kids down here. A lot of excitement. Why not go for it? And they're going to. No surprise here. Just blow them up the middle. Maybe try that hard count, you know, to draw them off sides. If you get the free, you know, the penetration from the defense. But get up there and go for it. Fourth and inches. They brought in another tight end, Andy Vandeveer. Robinson and Roberts will be in the backfield. Shy of the Golden Gopher, 47. Peterson's in motion, the receiver, the quarterback keeper, and he easily gets the first down, following the block of his center, Derek Green, and his guard, William Brown. That was easily done. We saw Travis Cole do it for the Gophers earlier on, and his counterpart, Rivers, does it for North Carolina State. Well, when you're six foot five and you've got some size on, you can use that churn. Good block in there, as you said. William Brown, 74. Derek Green, 73. Center and guard got a good drive off there. Penetration. And Chuck Amato gets what he wants. He keeps the drive alive. So Robinson remains by himself in the backfield. They've taken out Brown Rice at the left guard from the 46. And the fake end around, buying time for Rivers. Outside it goes. That ball bobbled and dropped by Eric Lee with the coverage by Travis Graham. Incomplete pass, second down and 10. Well, a lot of excitement there by Leak. I think he did just fail to look the ball in. You know, there's a there's a real tendency. You get in a bowl game. You want to do something exciting. You take your eyes off the look downfield. I, well, I almost hate to ask you this, but I'm sure you played in the bowl game at Penn State. No, actually, I oh, didn't. Can you believe that? I can't, no. I was one of the best things ever happened to Penn State. <laughs> when I left, they started winning. You were the first <laughs> player ever drafted by the AFL or NFL, am I correct? Exactly. Out of Penn State. Uh, well, under Joe Paterno. Under That's Joe correct. Paterno. Exactly. He's had about 300 since. Yeah, since. <laughs> you led the way, second down and 10 from the 46. Good time for Rivers. Looking at options. Here comes Riley. There goes the pass. Boy, incomplete looking for Willie Wright. I couldn't believe that Derek Green didn't snap the ball. He got the penetration into the gap. Three, five yards. I almost thought there was contact. Hard count. It's called a freeze count. What you do is you emphasize it. Hut, hut. You see the penetration right there. I thought there was contact. Hey, let's let the play go on. I didn't see a flag. John Schlecht was on that Minnesota line, and if anyone was going to be caught, it was him, but they don't nail him as you take a look at Glenn Mason. Well, when you're that center, you've got to snap the football. Glenn Mason got yes. away with one right yeah. there. Third down and 10 for North Carolina State, trailing on a 12-yard touchdown pass by Minnesota running back Tellus Redmond after a Golden Gopher interception. Ninth play of the drive, four receivers. Rivers sets across the middle. That's bobbled and dropped by Coran. 
Robinson and Mike Leanne was covering on the play. So a couple dropped passes. It's incomplete. It's fourth down and they got a punt. Well, this is unbelievable. Corin Robinson, I mean, he catches everything. Number three. Watch, he's going to get across the middle. He's got separation. Look at that. He's got speed. He can run that football. And for Rivers, he just could not believe it. He walked back for the, to the huddle just shaking his head. You've got to catch those. Punt now from Austin Herbert. High hanging punt into the wind. Redmond is deep back. Then Ricochet is into the end zone. A touchback with a hang time of almost five seconds by the freshman from Cary, North Carolina, Austin Herbert. 45-yard punt. Wolfpack down to the Golden Gophers. 7-0 on a rushing touchdown. And a mic. Kevin, on this play, this is amazing. Chuck Amato was upset. Tell us Redmond signals fair catch right there. That's fair catch. Then he comes over and blocks. You can't do that. The ball bounces on about the four-yard line. You know, you can down the football inside that. Once you signal fair catch, you cannot block. And Amato was hot. Greg Singer, what do you have? Well, Chuck Amato saw the same thing that you did, Dave, and he was very irate at the officials during that timeout. He went up to him and said, why didn't you call it? The officials said, well, we thought it was a weak attempt at a block. He said, I don't care what you thought. You know darn well it was a block. This is a bowl game for you guys, too. Now make the call. Kevin? He's been to a lot yeah. of bowl games. Uh, Chuck Amato has at Florida State in his first year. Takes North Carolina State to a bowl game with a 7-4 and four record. Gophers from the 21st and 10th. Look, the Redmond throws back to Travis Cole. Going deep, and he's got Mays inside the 40-yard line, who then coughed up the ball. They mark it down at the 36-yard line. It's a gain of 44 yards on the play. A flea flicker with Redmond pitching back to Travis Cole. Two things on this play really hold him. It's a play into the line. He hands the football off. Now watch the quarterback drop back. Now turn around and throw it back, and he's got his wide receivers going right down the middle of the field. It's going to be a post pattern. But watch the tail end of this. I thought for a second it was a fumble. The ground cannot cause the fumble. The ball evidently didn't come out. Boy, that's a close call. From the 36-yard line, Redmond in the backfield who gets the call and fouls a block by Heyer and his wide receiver Ryan Keller before Adrian Wilson stops him for a two-yard gain down to the 35-yard line, bringing up second down and eight. Well, right now, NC State needs someone to step up that emotion. They need a LeVar Fisher. They need someone like get in there. Chuck Amato knows this game is played with emotion. They need to, to just create a turnover, create some havoc in there. That's a man who can do it. That's Kameka and Antonio yeah. Burnett. 100 tackles plus a piece. Second down and eight. Golden Gophers inside the state 35. Wait, wait, wait. Redmond again in the backfield. Good block by Heyer in the pass out of the reach of the tight end. Utah, the freshman from Hastings, Minnesota. So it'll be third down. Well, big downs. You talk about big downs, and this one certainly is. It's big for NC State. They've got to come up with a defensive stop. It's big for Minnesota. They don't want to lose this momentum. Glenn Mason knows. said, hey, we had trouble in the red zone all year long. That's why our field goal kicker kicked 34 kicks. That's right, but a pretty good third down team. Yeah, third down conversion was decent, but they get inside that 20. Forget about it. They had a lot of problems. Inside the state, 35, third down and eight, four receivers, one of which Patterson's in motion. He gets the pass, then from Belleville, Illinois, takes it inside the 30, close to a first down to the 27-yard line. Terrence Holt made the tackle for North Carolina State as the angular 6'3", Tony Patterson, comes close to a first down. Watch this ball, just come flying out there. He's got good blockers out in front. Now he makes a good cut, puts his head down, picks up good yardage. Going to be fourth down. It's real close. Now, does Glenn Mason do the same thing that Chuck Amato did? Does he go for it or bring on his field goal kicker? What would you do again? I think I'd go for it. You know, like I say, it's a bowl game. You're excited. You've got a lot of enthusiasm. And NC State has yet to stop that offensive line. So it's fourth down. We'll call it a yard inside the North Carolina State 27. There's a flag. There is. And there was some motion and some contact on that line. Yeah, I think it was the tight end. I think the tight end fell out of his stance. Much to the chagrin of Glenn Mason. Prior to the snap, false start. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Kevin, the, the tight end can move, but he can't do anything to draw him off sides. And watch the tight end top of your screen. You see that? That drew off the defense. Flag came in for that good call. And Jamison helped him by shoving him back in the yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> A little sportsmanship there. 
Exactly. Fourth down and six with the penalty push just inside the 32-yard line of North Carolina State. The four receivers, everybody's moving. There go the flags again. I think that time it might have been Adam Hayer. I mean, excuse me, higher, I should say, number 74 jumps. Golly, they got the they got the jumps over there on offense. So you're a defensive player. You're down there. You're coiled. You move on ball movement or player movement. Five yard snap. Both sides. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still fourth down. See if it's not right up in there. It is. See, now that's jump back. The hand right there. That's what that's what he was pointing at. That's what you do if you're a defense player. He moved. He moved. He moved. Well, it was fourth and one. Now it's back to just inside the 37-yard line, bringing up fourth down and out of field goal range is what yeah. it means. <laughs> fourth down and 11. And they've still got Cole in there. And they're not thinking about a field goal right now, although they got a pretty good field goal kicker in Dan Nystrom. The play clock is down to six, and it looks like the Golden Gophers are content to let it run down. Well, they're going to take the five. They want to take the five-yard penalty, get a little bit more distance to punt to the corner. Now, see, if I'm North Carolina State, I decline that exactly. penalty. Exactly. Well, well, I'm not going to give you the benefit that's, of that. That's exactly. You ain't punting to my corner. No, let's see what they do. <laughs> it is delay a game. They must have heard you. Yeah. Chuck Chuck them out. No. Yeah. Kevin said we're not taking it. We're not taking it. That's it. <laughs> So Preston Greening is back out there to punt for the University of Minnesota. Corin Robinson is deep back. This guy has been the number one oh. punter in the college game since week one. He gets a good snap. And with the breeze in his back, lets this bounce at the five and trickle into the end zone with the touchback to the 20-yard line when we come back on a 37-yard punt. The Golden Gophers from the Big Ten Conference have a 12-yard touchdown run from Tellus Redmond after an interception and lead North Carolina State 7 to nothing. Minnesota is the owner of six national championships with five occurring within seven years. Charles Bud Wilkinson led the Golden Gophers to three consecutive championships and was named All-American in 1935. 1941 halfback Bruce Smith led Minnesota to a perfect season and a national title. He was later rewarded with the Heisman Trophy, remaining the only Minnesota player to ever win that award. There's great tradition. The last championship for this program occurred back in 1960. It's been a while. Well, it's been a while. Sure has been. Every time I think of Minnesota, you know who I think of? Bronco Nagurski. Yes. I mean, that, now there was a guy. Wow. Well, stay tuned. We've got a little treat for you. Oh. Guys, you're done. All right. Train Jackson is in the backfield, and he gets the call running up the middle, put up from behind, and brought down by Schlecht. But he dragged the 280-pound Schlecht with him about three yards of the 11 he carried up to the 31 and a North Carolina State first down. Well, the first two possessions have not been good. Look at their 12 plays, 27 yards of turnovers. They have not done anything. They need to get in and just establish that rhythm. And you pass because you can run the football, and they've got a good runner in Ray Robinson. Well, Trey Jackson remains in there, the sophomore from Birmingham from the 31. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Rivers is only two of eight throwing, fires a pass. That's incomplete as well. He was looking for both, I think, Robinson and Peterson. Yeah. They were crossing. It's an incomplete pass in second and ten. Yeah, there had to be a misplay on that because both wide receivers came to the inside on a post pattern. You just don't see that. You don't see both of them come down here and go inside. Look at this, both in the same zone right there. You don't see that very often. But you just get the feeling that Phillip Rivers is not in sync right now. Got to just take one of those deep breaths. Two of nine. That's not very good. His last five passes. It's just not in sync for Phillip Rivers. Second down and 10 just outside the Wolfpack 30-yard line. Peterson's in motion. Here comes the blitz and the pass by Rivers. Finally caught by Peterson up near the 38-yard line. There was a gain of eight on the play, and he was tackled by Justin Hall. The blitz was on by Lorenzo Griffin from the strong safety right up the middle. And you know, Brian Peterson does a good job on this. When you're a hot receiver and you see that blitz, you just come off the line and turn quickly. Look back to your quarterback, give him somebody to throw to. And that's what number two, Brian Peterson did. So now up to the 39-yard line where it is third down and two. Tremaine Simmons and Jackson in the backfield. And now Jackson is on the move. And Rivers will throw to Jackson. That ball was tipped and knocked down by Craig White, number 50, who has made another big first quarter play in this game. 
Where Greg White, when you when you don't get penetration, what the offensive linemen try to do, they try to chop you, get you get your hands down. Watch number 50, Greg White, get up there with that big hand. It's only 6'2", but he skied on that one. So White has come up with a couple good plays. The honorable mention, all Big Ten selection to punt Austin Herbert. His first one. Sailed uh, 50 yards tonight. Tellus Redman is back, uh, back at about the 25-yard line. Oh, he's got a good move. Right Another one at great hang time, and Redman back to about the 16-yard line. And broke down nicely on the play by the long snapper, Danny Young. That's the guy that snapped the ball. 46-yard punt, 10-yard return. Golden Gophers on top on a touchdown run, 7 to nothing. <laughs> Dave Rowe, Craig Sager. <laughs> and the Golden Gophers have it at about the 25-yard line with Tellus Redmond in the backfield. Travis Cole as the quarterback. First down and 10. Three receivers sent out. And it goes outside. Caught by Patterson. The second reception of the night. Good block ahead by Ron Johnson. LeVar Fisher makes the stop after a gain of seven on the play, and he's up to the 32-yard line. And, you know, Chuck Amato told us LeVar Fisher, number 44, he said his motor runs full speed all the time. You saw a good example of it there. He's the outside backer. He ran the line and made the tackle. That's why he had 166 tackle. Leading tackler in college football. Yeah. Oh, and that's why Chuck Amato loves him. Just a junior. Second down and three. With the ball at the 33. Redmond the call, nice block, and he gets free, and there he goes outside the 40 and wrestled out of bounds by Terrence Holt. A gain of 11 on the play. Minnesota has had their way offensively with the defense of the Wolfpack tonight. They really have. When you get locked up on blockers, you've got to be able to get off at the point of attack. You see how they're locked up now. Right there, he runs right by him. Now he's into the secondary, and everybody's chasing him. He runs to the corner. He's got the angle. Be able to get that extension with your arms and shed the blockers. You've got to be able to move to the football. 1,122 yards by Redmond. It's raining now. It has begun to fall in sheets here in Miami. Five carries and 34 yards for Redmond. Otto Fitzpatrick is in the backfield. First down and 10 from the 44. A fake by Fitzpatrick. Here goes Cole, and he throws wide open downfield. Ron Johnson dancing by Holt, diving down to the 15-yard line, and another first down with a massive pickup of 40 yards on the play. The tackle made by Brian Williams. Another long completion by quarterback Travis Cole. Well, he's just easy running back. Now watch, he's going to come all the way outside there. He, and the thing that really makes this play work is that Travis Cole has all day long to find him. Look at the time he had standing back there. Put, you put a linebacker on him, you're not going to stay with him. Not that long. NC State has got to get pressure. They come up and get pressure into Travis Cole's face. If not, it's going to be a long day. Johnson, a great one. First and 10 from the North Carolina State 16. Redmond back in, breaks a quick tackle. Chased by Fowler, whacked by Wilson at the 5. And close to a first down. Also, Terrence Holt got in there to make the stop. It's been easy for the Golden Gophers. Well, it has been. That time, NC State did get the pressure. The only problem was the pressure was from the back side. <laughs> they, they blitzed through on the back side. If the play had been coming that way, they'd have gotten it. But look at the total yards. It's been all Minnesota. NC State's lucky just to be down 7 nothing. Pass completions of 44 and 40 yards by Travis Cole. A touchdown run of 12 yards by Tellus Redman after an interception by Justin Hall. The Golden Gophers have looked great, and that's how far they've got to go for the first down. They're just outside the North Carolina State five-yard line as the rain continues to fall here in my... And, Kevin, I get the feeling that NC State needs to do a little, little run blitz. What you do is you blitz those backers through. The minute they, they come forward, when they see run, they continue through the line. So you get seven men up into the box. You get some penetration. Because up front, they're not stopping them right now. Minnesota's been rushing the football with some good, good pickup. Got to get through there. This is usually a waste down. You play fake action, look downfield, drop it out to one of your wide outs. Second inches outside the five. Nicole will take it himself, running up the middle, and then finally grabbed by Jarek Hall on the defensive line. That offensive line is, I'll tell you what, they are stout for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. They've only allowed 20 sacks all season. Exactly. Watch LeVar Fisher, 44, come over top. 
just doesn't get in front of the quarterback, and that's just a big, just a big, just a big pile. There's Fisher, 44. Look at him, over top. <laughs> quarterback knows. just steps just to the other side. <laughs> so does having everything go their way. Redmond is in with Fitzpatrick in the eye. Third, make it first and goal from the three-yard line. The fake. And here comes Cole throwing low, and it is dropped incomplete. And they have whistled it dead. They whistled yeah. dead. The pass intended for fullback Renato Fitzpatrick, who's only caught five passes all season. LeVar Fisher, as you see right there, rolling around the ball, incomplete second down and goal. And you know what's interesting about that? You're running the football with great efficiency. Why do you change? You see there, you see Travis Cole look down on that R pad, see what the coach is signaling in. He has the plays on a, on a pad. Coach signals in, or they signal in the play number. He looks down, calls it. Travis Cole coming into tonight, the 16th rated quarterback in college football. Second down, goal at the three, and the seventh play of the drive. Redman and Fitzpatrick in the backfield. The pitch out to Redman, a block by Fitzpatrick. He cuts another great block by the tight end, this time Bogus, and it's a three yard touchdown run. Scooter Bogus led the way, and the second time a tight end for the Golden Gophers has made a pivotal block, and it's 13 0 Minnesota. You're right. Bogus just, number 88, just drives off the football. You've got to get penetration, you've got to get in the backfield, but you just have to get off blocks. Look right there. There's a lockup right there. And he just never gets off the block, rides him all the way back into the end zone. You see there Adrian Wilson saying, hey, wait a minute, he's holding me. But you still got to do something to get off that block. Bogus is a freshman from Fort Worth, Texas. Dan Nystrom will try the extra point. Another high snap. Pull down cleanly, and it's up, and it's 14-0 Minnesota. There have been a couple long pass plays that have set up two touchdowns for Glenn Mason. One of 44 yards to Jermaine Mays. And on that last drive, 40 yards to Ron Johnson. And Travis Colart, tell us Redman has two rushing touchdowns, his seventh and eighth this season. And the Golden Gophers in the MicronPC.com ball here in Pro Player Stadium in Miami, leading 14 to nothing. Well, one thing about NC State, they're used to this position. They've been behind, and I think they had to come yes. from behind in, what, six or seven of their games? Exactly. They had three overtime games, so Chuck Amato and his crew, they're not going to panic in this situation. You don't want to get too far behind, but uh, they've been in this situation before. And a lot of this, you know, too, Dave bro, is, an, is a conference pride thing, too. The Big Ten says we are the best football conference in the country. The ACC known for basketball, but they're pretty strong, too, with the, a pretty good Florida State team at the head of that group. Absolutely. Interesting, Chuck Amato totals, he only had 63 players. He doesn't have a full contingent. He said, hey, he said, I didn't know we were on probation. He said, I didn't have enough players. <laughs> they said, hey, coach, you're not on probation. Not yet. I mean, but, he will. He'll recruit. He'll yes. make, I mean, they're 7-4 and four with a dilapidated team, and there were 6 in Senegal. The best is yet to come in Raleigh. Oh, absolutely. I can promise you that. Knowing his enthusiasm, he's from Florida, you know, with the, uh, the Florida State connection. Yes. He will get some great football players. He's the kind of guy you just like to play for. Yeah, because he was a great player himself in college. Greening will kick off again. And he gets good wood on this one, and taken at the five-yard line by Corin Robinson with a nice dance move to get by Henry, and then finally belted and taken down by Eli Ward. And a return of 23 yards on the play up to the 27-yard line. Eli Ward is a freshman from Akron, Ohio. As you take a look at Corin Robinson, who's from Belmont, North Carolina, and they need to start using some of his skill to get back in this game down by two touchdowns. Absolutely. And you saw all those markers on the back of his hat right there. You yeah. don't get those markers unless you make great football plays. You see him on the back of Rivers' hat. I can promise you, Corin is just waiting for that big play. So here's Phillip Rivers, first down and 10 yards to go, just outside his own 27-yard line, backfield of Robinson and Roberts. He may be changing the play as he surveys the Minnesota 43 look. Here comes Mezzer with the blitz. The pass is caught by Ray Robinson. Belts it, knocked out of bounds by Justin Hall at about the 40-yard line, a nice pickup of 12, and that's the kind of play they need more of. Yeah, what they did is they took Corin Robinson and they ran him deep, and he, he attracted all the coverage going to be on the left side of your screen they run Robinson number three deep then they just throw underneath them look at the wide open hole right there that Ray Robinson catches I'll tell you Corin Robinson almost got a penalty there he came back trying to get a block you know like wide receivers always like to do Ooh, that would have been costly Leanne played it well for Minnesota from the 40-yard line first and ten 
Four receivers, as you can see, for freshman quarterback Phillip Rivers. He set all kinds of freshman passing records in the ACC. Ball to pass here, and it's caught by Robinson and down by Leanne again. Mike Leanne is a sophomore from Hopkins, Minnesota. A gain of eight right there and marked the ball at the 48-yard line. And, Kevin, it's interesting. Watch the coverage. Drop back quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then the quarterback just sees it, throws it right to him underneath. They're giving him a lot of cushion. He's going to attract a lot of attention. He's got that great speed. He's got that tremendous leaping ability. Second most receptions in North Carolina State history. Second down, short two, shy of the 49. Top of your screen, Peterson in motion. Handoff goes to Robinson. Broke a tackle, grabbed by Mesra, and brought down at the 44-yard line. And a first down for North Carolina State on a slashing run of six yards by Robinson. Yeah, slashing is really the word to describe that. What happened is Ray Robinson, he was starting to the strong side behind the tight end, and all of a sudden saw that little crack made the great vision movement back into the hole and picked up six yards. Little used wide receiver Andy Bertrand is in inside the Golden Gopher 45. It's first and 10 for freshman quarterback Philip Rivers. He's an audible on the line. He's got a couple on this drive. Yep. Robinson again trying to maneuver outside, and a gain of three is all he can muster. He was following the block by Jarvis Borum, the tackle made by Greg White, and he's down to the Golden Gopher 42. North Carolina State coming in at 7-4. They won two of their last three games to get this postseason bid. Well, look at the three overtime. They had two wins yeah. in that. And who would have thought Rivers? Interesting, Chuck Amato said, you know, I knew the second day he was going to be, the second day of spring ball that he was going to be my starting quarterback. At the goal for 42, North Carolina State second down and seven. And Rivers at the work, and a pass batted down beautifully on the play. There goes a flag. Looked like Justin Hall really had played that well, but the flag is down where the ball was batted at the 39. Yeah, you can't come through a player to knock it down, and that's what they're going to do. You're going to see drive off the ball right here. Now, when he comes back for it, they come over top of him, and then he was holding him, too. Yep, yep. All 38 had He had him locked a little bit. Looking for Willie Wright. Pass interference. He gets a defense. It'll be a spot foul. Automatic first and down. So they get a first down to the Minnesota 39 yard line. See, Glenn Mason doesn't like that. He knows that his team has dominated this first quarter of football. They just have run up and down the field. Now NC State is getting a little bit of a spark. They're getting back into that rhythm. You're seeing that Rivers is getting a little bit uh, a little bit more excited. Well, he's got five receivers. Shotgun formation. You see the penalty story. One of his receivers is the backup quarterback. First and 10 from the 39. Here she gets away from White. He's chased by the other White. And the pass almost picked off, and it is grabbed by Andre Brown. His first career interception. And the second interception thrown tonight by freshman quarterback Phillip Rivers. So before him, Justin Hall with his first career pick. And Andre Brown, a junior, gets his first career interception. Well, he gets outside the pressure. Now watch this. He throws the ball up right there. You go up for it. Look at the tip drill. Once that ball's knocked up in the air, all those defensive backs yell, fire, fire. Everybody knows the ball's up in the air. And you see the, re the recovery of that interception. But again, when you go up, you can't tip it. <laughs> good job. That's just a good job. Good defensive hustle. Rivers came into tonight all season long with just nine interceptions, but he throws two already in a almost hour-long first quarter here from Miami. <laughs> from the 28, the pitch out to Redmond, the end to Jermaine Mays, chased by Fisher. Down the sideline, and there he goes, getting a great block from the quarterback, Travis Cole, down the sideline. Adrian Wilson knocks him out of bounds. A 23-yard reverse gain by Jermaine Mays, and the quarterback sprung him for an additional 10 yards. This is about a 60-yard run for a 20-some <laughs> yard gain. Look how far he runs. There's Cole, number seven. Look at him looking for his block right there. And he gets a good block. Boy, that's something when a quarterback, you love to be in there and when they grade those films, you say, Coach, did you see me wipe him out on the sideline? <laughs> he's 6'3", so he's got the size. They're just creeping into North Carolina State territory, first and 10. Redmond gets the call with a nice block on the play from his receiver, Rain Keller, and he tumbles his way to the 37-yard line. It's a gain of 12. It's a first down. Corey Lyons makes the tackle. Well, again, NC State locked up on the player. They've got to get those blocks. When 
you run a football like this and you run right by people, see how quickly they run right by them? You can see right there, they're locked up. You've got to use that arm strength to get to that separation. You've got to be able to slide to the hole. I like the way this Golden Gopher team blocks on big plays, big yeah. runs downfield. Well, they like running the edges. They love running off the tackles. And NC State's going to have to make some adjustments. They've got to get some pen uh, penetration. 37-yard line, first and 10. Redman, huge hole. A block downfield, dancing down the sideline, grabbed by Williams at the six. A 31-yard weaving run by Tellus Redman, tackled by Adrian Wilson, first and goal to go from outside the five-yard line for Minnesota. Well, we talk about running the edges. That's the edge right there. When you lock up right there, you see how he blocks inside? Everybody is locked up on somebody. Now he makes just a nice cut back inside, but you've got to make him change direction. When you're running to the point of attack, and you don't change direction or change speed, boy, that's going to be a long. Redman is making them pay at the corners. Nine carries and 90 yards, two touchdown runs by Tellus Redman, and Minnesota interception set up this wonderful drive, and now the position at the five, first and goal. Redman again diving into the teeth of the North Carolina State defense, takes it down to the two, where it was grabbed by Terrence Hold on the play. It'll be second down and goal. Well, you know, I look at Redman, and I'm thinking, I look down at his stats, he averaged 102 yards a game. A game. Right, We're right. still in the first quarter. <laughs> He's got 90-some already? Golly, wow. Got to do something to stop number 32 if you're NC State. 23-yard gain in an end around was good, too, to Mays, who has come up with two big plays tonight. Now it is second down and goal outside the two. The fake to Redmond. Here goes Travis Cole being chased by Lockyer into the end zone. And Minnesota gets their third rushing touchdown tonight. Well, NC State is they're moving so quickly to the football, trying to stop it at the point of attack. Backside control is just not there. And Travis Cole just jogs into the end zone. Once you make that play fake, you got that defensive end out there. It's no match. And you make that you make that little play fake, and then you've got your defensive end running after him, trying to catch him. That's Locklear. He's not going to catch a Travis Cole. That is Cole's fourth rushing, make it fifth rushing touchdown this season. High snap again from Pruden, pulled down nicely by Greening, and the kick is up by Dan Nystrom. And the junior from Lake Oswego, Oregon, has led an incredible offensive performance in the first quarter with 45 <laughs> seconds remaining. Three rushing touchdowns, two by Redmond, one by Cole, who on this drive, Gave a wonderful block on an end around that sustained it. And Minnesota up right now, 21-0. Well, if I was Travis Cole, I'd pick up the headset. I'd, talk, I'd want to talk to the coach, too. Hey, coach, <laughs> you see anything I'm doing wrong? No, just keep on doing what you're doing. Because Travis Cole has just led them. Interesting, in talking with Glenn Mason yesterday about Travis Cole, we said, well, what game was his best? I thought Iowa, when he had the great stats at the end of the year, they had to win that football game. He said when he personally led the attack and they beat Ohio State, that was their greatest day. And you can see the coaching staff for the Golden Gophers. Tony Peterson was just talking with them downstairs. Peterson in his second year at University of Minnesota. He came from Marshall where he was the coach of you-know-who, the big uh, Minnesota Viking receiver Randy Moss. Absolutely. So it is 21-0, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Robert and Robinson deep back inside the five. Greening is set to kick it off again. His leg's going to get worn out the way he's been used. Fourth time tonight, he's had to boot it. Picked up by Corin Robinson at the five. Ray Robinson will be a lead blocker, and he blocks Henry, who on his back trips him up. Nice play by young Jimmy Henry, who makes the tackle. A 23-yard gain by Corin Robinson. That was an interesting play. Did you see your Henry did? You called it perfect. He got knocked on his back and reaches up and grabs his leg. <laughs> that, was, that was a heck of a play. Well, you can make some great tackles on your back. Watch this. He's going to get knocked. Watch number six right up in here. Right there. He gets knocked down and pulls him down anyway. <laughs> well, Coach, I was absorbing the block. <laughs> He's a great kid. Made the transition yeah. this year from safety to linebacker. And here comes North Carolina State, 27-yard line, first down and 10. I assume a shell shock for Phillip Rivers, who's thrown two interceptions in the first quarter. Ray Robinson gets the call, the tackle made once again by the aforementioned Jimmy Henry. 
And let me tell you what you do if you're NC State in this situation. You wait for the quarter to change right now, yeah. obviously. But you go back to your basics. You call upon a Ray Robinson to pick up the yardage, get a little bit of composure, hope that you can drive the football, get some pressure off your defense, and get back into the flow. But uh, I know right now, NC State, they can't wait for the first quarter to end. That was a six-yard gain up to the 32-yard line. It's second down and four, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. That lasted just under one hour. Well, we've got three more of these babies left. It's 21-0 with the University of Minnesota getting three rushing touchdowns. Two by running back Tellus Redmond from the Micron PC.com Bowl from Miami on TBS. Tough uh, first quarter for Phillip Rivers, the starting quarterback for North Carolina State. Our Craig Sager is standing by with his high school coach on the sideline. Well, thank you very much, Kevin. Well, Steve, we have not seen him struggle all year. He has not played like a freshman. What does he need to do now to get back in sync? Well, he's certainly got to settle down a little bit. He, he made a bad decision on the last interception. And so we want to come across the field and into a crowd. And, you know, he knows better than that. But um, there's a lot of game left. And, uh, I think I think he'll he'll uh, he certainly will want to tone himself, and he's more interested in how he can help his team win this football game. Right now, we're dug a pretty deep hole against a pretty good team, so we, um, you know, I I got a lot of confidence in him and this team and his coaching staff. So I, I think they'll respond well. That's the word from the coach now, Steve Rivers, is the father. <laughs> First of all, how did Mr. Alabama, who grew up idolizing Notre Dame, end up at NC State? Well, uh, they did a great job recruiting him. Uh, he knew that he had a chance to come in early and have a chance to compete for some playing time, and that was important to him because he graduated early. And, and, um, and he came over here for a visit, and he came home, and he said, Dad, uh, this feels like home. So you know, He likes home, so he liked this place too. Well, as Kevin mentioned, it was a long first quarter, but let's hope things turn around here for you in a second. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks. Kevin. I'm just glad to see Craig is dry. Yeah. That's my that's my turn tonight was the weather in Craig. He's got a good looking suit on as always, and he is dry. There was a nine yard run by Ray Robinson on second down and four, the first play of the second quarter. He gets a first down up to the 42, and it's first down and 10 for North Carolina State. Four receivers for Rivers, and a good block by Borman. A pass is incomplete down the middle where there's a flag now thrown late at about the 43. Yeah, it's got to be interference. Ray oh, Robinson I hope was it just, is. Well, Ray Robinson was just pushed in the back. I hope it's interference because no one was within the mile. <laughs> yeah. It's on the Gophers. Yeah, Ray Robinson, he's he's the back in the backfield. He just slides out. He's just going to come across the middle here. Watch him get pushed. Pass interference. See him right Against in here. See him, see him get pushed Spot right foul. there. Can't Automatic. First down. Hey, that's Justin Hall. He's getting his name mentioned he a lot. He is. He's, he's been all over the field. He's got the great interception, but the last two haven't been good. He only started two games during the entire season, right from the Big Ten, but he gets the start here for Coach Glenn Mason tonight. So it is a first down up to the 45-yard line. Coach Ray Jackson is in the backfield with the four receivers for Phillip Rivers. Outside he throws, caught by Peterson, wrestled down by Lehan. Well, that was a good tackle by Lehan. That's what you want your defensive backs to do. When you make a tackle, you don't run up and squat on them and just try to catch them. You run through him. Look how far he's playing off. Now he's just going to barrel up there. Watch this. He catches it. Look at this. Run through him. Wrap him up. Don't let him go. Young people watching this game, that's the way to tackle if you're a defensive corner. Gain of uh, four on that play up to the 50. It is second down and six. Minnesota with three rushing touchdowns and two interceptions. Second down six from the 50. Here comes Eric Leak getting the handoff on the reverse, and then he tried to pitch it, I believe, to Ray Robinson. It's a loose ball right at midfield. North Carolina State retains possession, but was it a lateral? I think it was a lateral. I think Chris Colmer, number 70, came over and recovered it. See if or, he does. Or did it just fumble? I mean, I have to watch this again. Well, I think he tried to. I think he tried to toss it right in here. Watch right here. See. He just, he flips he did, it out. Yeah. Now look at Comer, number 70. He sees the football. He comes in. Look at him diving for that football. He gets the ball. <laughs> Heads up play by the big tackle. I've never Just seen a pressure. play like that. That's it was something on a reverse and then a pitch out. Third down and six for midfield. Derek Roberts in the backfield. Now they move Willie Wright over to a tight end. Shotgun snap from Green. Good block by Borum. The pass errant looking for fullback Derek Roberts. 
Incomplete pass, and they got a punt on fourth down. Well, what happened that time, Riley, number 91, got pressure on the quarterback. He had to dump it before his back even turned around and look. Rivers under a little bit of pressure there. Uh, oh. That kid, that Riley, oh. is an outstanding player. I saw where one draft analyst had him going in the top five in the NFL draft. Well, when you can make 13 sacks in a season, you're good. And that's what the... That's exactly what Glenn Mason said to us. He said, well, if we can get his motor started, <laughs> wow. And freshman Austin Herbert will punt, and they set up the return. Ellis Redman let this fly over his head, land at the one, and kick into the end zone. The touchback will bring it up to the 20. Hang time of four and a half seconds for the freshman punter with a 50-yard boot in his pocket. The Minnesota Golden Gophers from the Big Ten lead the ACC Wolfpack in North Carolina State by three touchdowns. The MicronPC.com Bowl on the Superstation is brought to you by MicronPC.com. Think beyond the box. And by Bud Light. For the great takes that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Happy holidays, everyone, from Miami. Three rushing touchdowns, two by Tellus Redmond. 21 0 is the score with the Golden Gophers on top. Our Aflac trivia question tonight What past MicronPC.com bowl player won the NFL rushing title this past season? Ooh, 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 I know, <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, I know. <laughs> well, it we, was such a moment two years ago. Unfortunately, if you're North Carolina State fan, it was against your exactly. team. Exactly. Back in 98. A hint, the kid played at the University of Miami. Oh, you're just giving it away. <laughs> Run the 20-yard line. First and 10. There's a block by Hire, and not much room there for Redman. A good stop by Fisher and Riggs on that defensive line. And a gain on the play of one. Second down and nine up to the 21. Boy, that was a good tackle. And that's the kind of things that can kind of get your, your motor going. Riggs gets in there, and he kind of horse collars them down. Well, they need something for the motor. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, they do. They need a break. They need a, they need a turnover. That's what you play for. And momentum in this game, obviously, all in Minnesota's favor. NC State needs something big to happen. Need an interception. Need a fumble. Need something good. But they don't need that right there. Oh. Second down nine. Utech, the tight end, is tackled from behind by Clayton White. A gain of 10. A Minnesota first down up to the 31-yard line. Boy, Travis Cole's just got the touch. Watch a little play action fake. He's going to come out right here. He's going to roll strong side. Look him look. Just dump it over top of the this perfect throw. Just look back. You look it right in there. UTEC's got it. Dave, I love the offensive line of Minnesota. Yeah, they are big. You know, I, that's one of the things I brought up to in our talk yesterday with Chuck Amato. I said, hey, they average right at 300 pounds. They're all big. They're all strong. They're led by Ben Hamilton, All-American in the center. They can control the line of scrimmage. He said, well, we've got to get penetration. Gophers tonight have had nine plays of 10 yards or more. And a timeout taken, and it is raining again here very hard as Travis Cole goes over and talks with the brain trust, leading him to a 21-0 lead. Well, we'll uh, repeat our Aflac trivia question for you. What past MicronPC.com bowl player won the NFL rushing title this past season? Edger and James from Miami in the 1998 MicronPC.com Bowl. He was the guy. Oh, what a, what a game. They faced North Carolina State at the Hurricanes, and one of the top rushing backs in the country, James rushed for 156 yards, two touchdowns against the Wolfpack that night. And he was wonderful. Left as a junior at City of Miami, but Miami had come off a game against UCLA that season that was just much talked about, and it was a Miami yeah, win. First down and ten at the 30-yard line. Mays on the move. The pass goes from Cole to Mays, but in back of Mays, unfortunately, incomplete. And they ruled it incomplete. It was not a lateral. That's what I thought it was for a second. The way yeah. the, the angle of the ball coming across the field, I thought it was an angle. If it goes forward, it's not a lateral. Let's see where the ball comes. Quarterback standing about two yards. I don't know if that's not a lateral. Boy, that's close. Fortunately for them, it went out of bounds. But not much has gone wrong for Glenn Mason. He has had everything tonight go his way. So has Travis Cole. Second down and 10 from the 30 in the handoff. Going up the middle to Redmond, brought down by Fisher. And also by D'Antonio Burnett. 
Gain of four on the play under the 36. Boy, and Redmond, he's been Mr. Everything tonight. Start talking about him running to the corner. Look at the speed, just burst in the end zone. Got those two rushing touchdowns. Again, getting great blocks, but look at the speed. He runs under control, just kind of darts in there. I like that slash type of running that he does. 99 yards rushing already. Boy, we got a lot of the second quarter. Left. Ooh, third down and five outside the 35. Patterson, the freshman, in motion. And Cole throws quickly. It's caught by Ryan Keller. He's got a first down. He is drilled by Brian Williams. Then gang tackled at the 45-yard line of North Carolina State. On third and five, he picks up 19 yards. And Travis Cole, all night long, has been right on the money. This was going to be a slip pass, but watch what happens. It looks like it's going to come out here. All of a sudden, he sees right there in the middle of the field. He's number one, Ryan Keller, break free. NC State thinking it's screen out to the flat. They find him. That's a good tackle right there. Pick him up. And that's called a de-cleater when you lift them up and <laughs> stuff them down in the ground. You know, I used to say defense backs, they make those tackles, you know, tink, 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 tink. Yeah, yeah. Climbing, you know, woof, bam, bam. smash. Yep. <laughs> right in your face. Redmond in the backfield at the 45 of North Carolina State. Minnesota first down and 10 after the 19-yard game. Ellis Redmond gets by one defender, then he's brought down after a gain of maybe a yard by Jarek Hall at the 44-yard line, bringing up second down and nine. Well, you got to hold on. If you're NC State, you got to make big plays. You got to make them in the backfield. You got to hold on. They had a chance that time. Chuck Amato knows that he needs something to turn the complexion of this football game. Needs a big play. Can't allow Minnesota just to continue to drive down there. Redman with his seventh 100 yard game this season. Darrell Thompson did it back in eight. Second down in nine from the 44. Redman again sent up the middle, breaks a tackle, grabbed by Fisher as he crosses the 35, close to a first down. He's down at the 34. LeVar Fisher makes the stop. They have just buzzsawed their way through this defense all night long. Well, you like the way, don't you like the way Redmond runs in there yes. with control? You see him, he's got good vision into the hole. He slides real well, just looks for the hole, finds that little seam, and he runs under control, and he accelerates when he gets to the hole, and he finds it, and he's picking up, gobbling up yardage. 34-yard line, they do give him the first down. Eighth play of the drive. Redmond in the backfield, and he gets the call again. Stuck and brought down by Riggs. On that line, along with Ricky Fowler, and a flag is down at about the 27-yard line, well off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's a running play. The flag was thrown 15 yards downfield. You think, person, this situation, did somebody take a, just a shot, you know, maybe a, a wide receiver coming down or a defensive back? Because it, the flag was thrown completely away from the play. Personal foul yep. on the O, the defense. Ooh. May have been on Brian Williams in the second day. Yeah, See, he was over there pleading his case, and that's where he's playing the corner over on that 27-yard uh, line. Personal foul against the defense. 15-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. See if we see it right there. 29 is Brian Williams. Let's see what he does. Ooh, a little knee. Uh, I think that's what they call him. A little WCW action there. Well, that's 20 yards away from the play. Yep. Yeah, that's just a foolish penalty. Brian Williams, is he's too good a player to do that. That's just frustration. Believe me. He's looking over the bench. Coach is gnawing on him. Redmond is a running back. Golden Gophers in 10 inside the 20-yard line. Three receivers for quarterback Travis Cole. Handoff to Redmond, chased by Riggs, breaks a tackle of Holton, slides inside the five. They're going to mark him down at the six with a 13-yard gain as he pierces the line and was untouched for the first five or six yards oh. of that run. Boy, he runs through the hole and makes a little adjustment back to the weak side right here. But look at that, untouched into the secondary. The secondary, they're covering the receivers out there, so they've got to make the adjustment, just can't get back in time. Got to get better play out of the linebackers. They've got to move to the football. Got to ask those defensive linemen to stop them. First and goal from the six. Redman again blocked by Heyer, and he crawls inside the five and gets a meager gain of one. LeVar Fisher is there. 124 rushing yards from Tellus Redman. His season high, his career high, 211 against Wisconsin late in the big one. Ouch. That's 
I, I wonder if he had a hundred at the end of the first quarter. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you're not, if, if NC State's unable to stop him, they'll just keep on going to the well because he's a horse. He runs the football. He ran it 251 times during the season, almost 25 per uh, game. So he's used to carrying a lot. Second and goal. Fisher from behind grabs Redman and brings him down, and no gain on the play. Fisher with some nice penetration, number 44. Boy, if you're Travis Cole right now, you've got a lot of options. You've got that pass option. You've got Redmond running well. He's used that little fake where he's rolled out. On, you know, just Travis Cole's got a lot of options right now. Travis Cole was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays in Major League Baseball, and he had that ahead of him, but decided to play football, and understandably so. He looks very sharp and playing in a great Big Ten conference for a strong program at Minnesota. Third down goal at the front. They have 11th play of the dry up. Redman in the backfield. Three rushing touchdowns already by the Golden Gophers tonight. And on third and goal, the snap is not there. The flag has been thrown. I don't think that uh, Ben Hamilton wanted to snap the ball. His quarterback was pulling back. Yeah, the quarterback looked like he pulled out a little bit early. But then when you see those, those offensive linemen start to pull, you know that somebody's messed up. Dead ball. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense. It's on the Five yard penalty. Still third down. Five penalties on Minnesota so far in this first half. But aside from that, I don't know what Glenn Mason's got to complain about. His team no. has been dominant since the opening kickoff. No, that's when you go into the locker room and say, everybody grab a Gatorade, sit down, relax a little bit. We're not changing anything. I'd say enjoy the weather, but it is still misty here. <laughs> it was raining a little bit hard. Third down goal with the penalty push back to the 10. Redman remains in the backfield. Travis Cole snuggles under Ben Hamilton. In motion is Ryan Keller. Good block and a deflected pass is incomplete. Did Fisher deflect that pass? He did. Yes. It's incomplete. Fourth and goal. They're going to have to settle for three, and North Carolina State's defense does their job. Yeah, Fisher's 44. He's going to drop back to his zone. What they're going to do is they're going to try to bring number three, Ron Johnson, a little dart. And look at number 44. Get that hand up. You see how wide open he was? Johnson had that football. Fisher dropped back in that little zone, got the hand up. So they call on Dan Nystrom to try a 27-yard field goal. He's kicked 22 field goals this season. He set a school record for points in a season. But he's had three blocked. And that kick is up and in from 27 yards away with 7.31 to play in the second quarter. And the Golden Gophers are on top of the North Carolina State Wolfpack 24 to nothing. Three rushing touchdowns and a 27-yard field goal. Minnesota shutting out North Carolina State. One of the great stories in broadcasting, college football and college basketball, Ray Christensen broadcasting tonight his 511th and final Golden Goal for football broadcast. He started broadcasting football in 19... 51 basketball for the Gophers in the 56th season. He just was awarded the Chris Schenkel Award as the nation's top local radio broadcaster. He's heard on WCCO 830 Radio in Minneapolis. Let's give a listen to one of the great yeah. legends in the business. I gotta get my pin out here. <laughs> okay, the Gophers will kick off right to left. Don't think there's a whole lot of rain now. It comes and goes, but sometimes when it comes, it's full faucet. Doesn't seem to be affecting the field that much, though. Seems like the players still have pretty good footing out there. Lehan has four tackles so far. Jimmy Henry, three tackles, and has broken up a pass. Two of the tackles on the special team. White with a couple of tackles and a pass broken up. This time, Ray Robinson goes back to join Corin Robinson as the deep men to return the kickoff. Earlier, they had Wilson in there, although he didn't return any. Greening ready to kick off. There's his kick. Another pretty good hang time taken at the five yard line by Corin Robinson. He breaks through the middle and lands out at where else? The 28. It's always the 27 or the 28 when they return it. When you think of great college broadcasters, there's John Ward at the University of Tennessee who just retired there. And our good friend Kay Wood Ledford up at the University of Kentucky. And we understand he's a bit under the weather, a little bit ill. And Kay Wood, our prayers and thoughts uh, with you. When I was growing up, I used to listen to Kay Wood Ledford. And if you're a Golden Gopher fan, uh, for more than four generations of fans, you've been listening to the wonderful voice, 
great description of Ray Christensen on WCCO Radio, one of the true gentlemen and class individuals in this broadcasting business. I love that description of the rain when it rains yeah. just like the faucet. It's like an open faucet. <laughs> what a man and what a great career. From the 28 yards and 10, Philip Rivers across the middle. It's his wide receiver, Corn Robinson, grabbed by Jimmy Henry and brought down from behind. At the 42-yard line, it's a pickup of 14 yards. Craig Sager, they're out to the 42 as we send it down to you. Well, you may have noticed that formation was without a fullback. Derek Roberts, the starting fullback for NC State, hurt his right wrist. He just went in for x-rays. They were negative. And now, as you can see, maybe he is running back on the field. And so now they will have their fullback because they need him. As we have seen, they have not been moving the ball, but he's back right now. Yep. Craig, is it raining down there? We can't tell from right now. Is, is it raining down there? Now we got a little window of opportunity right between two uprights. It's raining on the rocks in South Florida, but we're okay. Oh, you're a great weather cast. <laughs> Thank you. Wonderful meteorologist. First and ten. Ray Robinson running outside. He got a block on the play from Tremaine Simmons. Picks up six. Grabbed by Justin Hall and marked down at the 47-yard line. He's carried seven times tonight. Four yards on that six-yard game. And, Kevin, see if you don't see a different NC State this series. I think that right now what they've done is they've come to the sideline. You're right. They're shell-shocked. And their coaches have just told them, listen, go out, play, relax a little bit. Maybe you put, maybe you pressed a little bit. Just take a deep breath. Go out there and have some fun. See what can happen. They've been a team that has finished in the second half. See if Rivers doesn't respond a little bit better. Maybe make better decisions. Second down four from the 48. Fake handoff. Here comes the rush by Hoffman leading the triumvirate of Minnesota defenders. And the pass is caught by fullback. Tremaine Simmons close to a first down tackled by Andre Brown well, they were breathing down the freshman quarterbacks back you see Norman Chow who has a little bit of history with the passing game huh oh does he ever of course 22 years at BYU six of the 12 all-time career passers that's quite a that's quite a, a record you start talking about BYU and you think of those names man yeah. Robbie Bosco I, I would Steve assume Young. Steve Young was yeah. there when he was there absolutely there's some tremendous Ty Detmer won the Heisman Trophy and they make it by the nose of the football the deepest penetration tonight by North Carolina State Dave Rowe has been the Minnesota 39 yeah and you know Chow has now he's got Philip Rivers young freshman quarterback with great stats I mean he's that type of he's that type of coach that uh, can develop a quarterback. He loves the size of Rivers. Lavelle Edwards left, of course, retiring at yep. BYU, and Gary Croton, who was the offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears, took that head job yep. up with BYU. I just and see. I, I, I'm gonna tell you about Rivers. I just see a much more relaxed face on him. I think maybe he pressed a little bit. 48-yard line of Minnesota, first down and 10 yards to go for the Wolfpack. And Rivers sets and fires the pass across the middle. It's rustled in by Brian Peterson. It's a gain of four. Freshman Eli Ward makes the tackle at the Golden 44-yard line. And you know, Rivers, as I watch his release, it was really kind of funny talking yesterday <laughs> to Chuck Amato. I said, you know, he's got an interesting release. He says, it's ugly, isn't it? <laughs> I said, well, no, I didn't want to say that, Coach. He said, it is. It's ugly. But you know what? He gets the job done. He said he throws the football. He gets the ball there. He delivers it as evidenced by, what, 400, over 400 passes? Yeah. Second down and six from the 44 for North Carolina State. Shotgun snap from Green. Good time for the quarterback. Across the middle, he hits his running back, Ray Robinson, who is grabbed on the play by Clorenzo Griffin. They get a gain of 10. They're to the 34-yard line in Minnesota, and this is the deepest penetration for the Wolfpack tonight. Yeah, you see a little bit of different bounce in Rivers. Look, running back into the huddle, taking a little bit of charge, probably just took a deep breath, said, hey, we got nothing to lose now. Got to get back in this football game. And they might. There's certainly a lot of time yeah. the way we've seen this game go so far. Just under five minutes remaining in the second quarter. What Chuck Amato wants to do is he needs a score before halftime. They don't want to go in on the lower end of 24 to zip. You've got to have some positives to go in on. 34-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Good pickup by Simmons. Outside the pass goes to running back Ray Robinson. Upended and taken out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Knocked by Andre Brown. Gain of 14 on the play. They got a first down to the Golden Go for 20. Yeah, and how about the block by Corin Robinson, number three? Watch him come back. Number three is way down here. Bobby Corin, look right there. Bang, comes back and gets the block. <laughs> Again, watch Robinson right there. Watch him come back. I got him. Woo, that's 97. He's a 270-pounder. Rain is kicked up again here at Pro Players Stadium in Miami. There's a good look at Robinson. 62 receptions coming into tonight for the season. First and 10 
from the Gopher 20-yard line. And off goes to Robinson. Broke one tackle, then grabbed from behind by Eli Ward and brought down at the 13-yard. It's a gain of seven on the play. Boy, there is a different step and a different throttle now, a different Boy. gear. Well, I've been in that situation where everything goes wrong and you're sitting over there, you're pressing, and all of a sudden the coach just comes over and says, hey, calm down. It's just, we're just going to go out there and play football, and, and I think that's what they did. And, Dave, what about the Minnesota perspective? they got a huge lead. I, I, obviously, their intensity can't be as strong right now. Well, you can see it in Glenn Mason. He's sitting there 24 to zip. He's got his arms folded. He's trying to stay intense, but he's got a commanding lead. Over Second. there, sometimes you let down a little yeah, bit. You're absolutely. Right. Second down, long three inside the 14. Rivers across the middle. It's caught by Eric Leap. He's inside the five. He picks up a first down. It's a gain of nine. And he will move the chains for North Carolina State as Justin Hall makes the Minnesota tackle. Watch the release of Philip of Philip Rivers, number 17. It's like a shotgun. He doesn't reach way back. Watch him. He just kind of quick fires. Boom. He just hands the football. It's not a great chance. It's wobbly, but he gets there. Plus, did you see how many fingers he had on the laces? A lot of guys hold it at the end of the football. He holds it like in the middle. He's six of six on this drive. What if we could see that replay again? And I want you to watch where he's got his hands on this ball. Most quarterbacks will only touch the strings on the football with their pinky and their ring finger. But watch how many fingers he's got on the laces. Yeah, exactly right. See, right in there, look. All his fingers are on the football. They're all up wrapped around there. Timeout has been taken, and North Carolina State will have it first and goal at the goal for five, trailing 24 to nothing. It's 24 to nothing, Minnesota, but NC State has the ball first and goal. And coming up at halftime, Paul Dalton, who's with me right now, is going to attempt a kick from the 35-yard line for $1 million. You've been practicing? How have you been doing in practice? Been doing all right in practice. Having a lot of fun. You mean all right? You make them or not? <laughs> yeah, I make them. Before it was raining, the wind was swirling, the rain has stopped, the wind looks like it's behind you. Maybe things are in your favor. You know, the rain's not an issue. It's falling straight up and down. I'm used to it raining sideways. I'll run her up here in practice. Go ahead and make it at halftime. Kevin. Here he is. Follow through, my friend. Follow through. It's first and goal now with North Carolina showing some life at the Minnesota five-yard line. Ray Robinson is in the backfield. Three receivers have been deployed, and it looks like Rivers is changing the play, perhaps. Hand off to Robinson. And stop. Nice defensive play by freshman Eli Ward. Came through untouched and uncovered. No gain. In fact, the loss of about a half yard on the play. Second down and goal. Boy, this is a good tackle. 27. Eli Ward darts up in there. He's trying to get to the outside. And look, that tackle through him. You see, he doesn't just do that roll block into him. He grabs him, pulls him down. Good play by a freshman. Second down goal at the five. Tenth play of the drive. They've got three tight ends in. You know who I go to? Corin Robinson. He's got that great vertical leap. I think I'd go to him. He's one-on-one -on -one top of the screen. One-on-one -on -one with Andre Brown. Hand off to Robinson. Got a block for Roberts. Cuts back inside, then drilled by Ward. The freshman from Akron, Ohio, makes another big-time stop in the secondary for Minnesota. Did I say Corin Robinson? Maybe <laughs> I meant Ray Robinson. You meant Ray Robinson. That's right. <laughs> no, I've still gone to Corin Robinson. But again, good block right here. And then come back inside. Look at that. Make that little dart. Seize that. Get out of the way, ref. Goodness <laughs> gracious. What are you doing standing there? <laughs> well, the ball's just outside the goal for two. This is as big a play, I think, for Minnesota's defense as it is for the Wolfpack offense. Yeah, this is a huge play. You don't want to come away with three points. You need seven. Third and goal from just outside the goal for two. Fake handoff. Rivers to the end zone and caught for a touchdown by tight end Andy Vanderveer. He's caught, listen to this, he's caught 15 passes in his career. Of those 15 receptions, six have been touchdowns. Well, he's got great height, 6'4", and he goes up for it. Watch how high he goes up. He's a tight end. He comes, gets in the back of the end zone. There he is. Look how high he goes up for it, looks it in. And they're going to try for two, which is wise. They'll mark the ball at the yeah. three-yard line. Yeah, puts them down. Of course, if they make it, uh, it puts them down two touchdowns, two eights. Can you believe that? 15 career catches, six of them touchdown passes. <laughs> That's a pretty good average. I love it. I think I throw to him more. Roberts and Robinson in the backfield. 
Now Vandiver sets outside as a tight end. They're trying for two. In motion is Peterson. And Rivers to Robinson. Reels it in. Gets the two-point conversion. Nice catch with the pressure on by Riley and Hall. Boy, that was a good call by Chuck Amato and his staff. What they did is they ran strong side motion and just circled Ray Robinson, used that speed that the junior has out of the backfield. Good hands coming out of the backfield. Watch this. Just throw it to him. And it's 24 to 8 with play in the second quarter. Ray Robinson, who is the number three ranked running back receiver in college football with his 42nd catch right there. And he gets the two-point conversion. Coming up next Thursday on TNT, the Orlando Magic will take on the New York Knicks. Join me and Hubie Brown at Square Garden. January 9th on TBS, NBA Tuesday. San Antonio takes on the Orlando Magic. I'll be there with John Thompson and Danny Ainge. And Craig Sager, coverage for both nights begins at 8 o'clock Eastern time on Turner Sports. Well, a much-needed touchdown, a much-needed two-point conversion. We've got a new game with the Gophers on top, 24-8. to eight. Well, it makes a huge difference when you go in the locker room. If they've been down 24 nothing. that's pack your tent and go home. Yes. But now they've got to bounce. They see that they can remove the football. Minnesota, they just need to turn it back on. They were, I mean, they were totally in dominating in that first half. Austin Herbert will kick off and picked up inside the three-yard line by Ron Johnson. He scurries up past the 20. A flag has been thrown on the play. He carves his way to the 23. It's a 19-yard gain as it stands right now. Well, again, that flag was thrown about 20, mi about 20 from the play. <laughs> I wonder if Tony Patterson, number 17, got involved in a little altercation out there. Way over on the far side of the field. Our officiating crew tonight is from the Big East Conference, and Jack Kramer has had kind of a busy night. Our referee. This one is against the Gophers, and they've now got six penalties called on them. If you take a look at Philip Rivers, who on that last drive was a pristine seven of seven, five different receivers. 11 play drive, five and a half minutes oh. on the clock. All that Under information supplied team. by the ubiquitous Pat McGrath, for the end of the run. statistician here in Miami. And you know, that's, a that's what a freshman quarterback does. He makes mistakes, but he's recovering. And I think that's what makes Rivers such a unique freshman, is that he's able to recover. Now he's got that bounce. He's got a little bit more confidence. You see him talking there with Corin Robinson, number three, as wide receiver. They've got, look at him, he's putting the crowd up. Hey, we're back in this thing. He's too young to know any better, right? <laughs> Boy, right. You know, I love I Craig's talk with his dad. Yeah, so that, that, was really, that was really special. From outside the 12, first and 10, it's Tellus Redmond doused on the play by Burnett and Ricky Fowler for a gain of two. He's up near the 15-yard line. It'll be second down and a timeout taken by North Carolina State. Gophers have one timeout remaining. Wolfpack with two timeouts remaining. We're at 142 of the second quarter. And this is an interesting call because NC State thinks, hey, if they can stop them, they can get the ball, maybe get it in good field position, get a possible field goal. Chuck Amato heads up call there. For Minnesota, they just want to grind it out. They want to go to the locker room. Glenn Mason and his team, they just want to get there with that 24-8 to eight lead. You know, Dave, I got to believe that this team thought there were bigger things ahead of them. Well, I'm speaking of the Rose yeah. Bowl, which is as big a game as there comes in the college postseason. They were 5-2, and two, fresh off a win over top 10 Ohio State. Just three consecutive games. Why did the bottom fall out of this team? What happened was they just they just were snake bit. They had so many different things go wrong with them in that, in that little stretch. But then when they really needed it, they came back against Iowa. I mean, they came back and played really well. You can see there, they started off 5-2, and two, finished 1-3. and three. But that big, that win at Ohio State, look at that. First time in 51 years that they won. You think they weren't excited? Yep. Big. And, of course, uh, Glenn Mason used to coach at Ohio yeah. State. So that meant even more. And it was Woody Hayes from the 15-yard line. It is second down and eight. Gophers have one timeout. State with two. And the maroon and gold with a second down. And a handoff goes to Redmond, dragging with him Burnett on the run and then tackled eventually by Terrence Holt, it's a gain of 11. It's up to the 26-yard line, and call on Redmond every time, and he will give you the answer you want to hear. Absolutely. Now, if you're NC State, you let the clock run because Redmond just finds the hole. Look at him just run and shed people. 
137 yards tonight in the first half. Wow. <laughs> 19 rushes. Look at that average. 7.2 yards. What more can you do? The average four and a half yards per carry in the regular season. Now they've got Fitzpatrick back there, the sophomore from St. Louis. First down and 10 just outside the 25. Hand off to Fitzpatrick. Ooh. Nice block on the play by Cuppy. And look at him drive upfield and take it past the 45 into the 46. Jake Cuppy gave a great block from the right tackle. It's a 20-yard gain. The tackle's made by Holden Jamison. Another Minnesota first down, but a flag has been thrown, and it's against the Golden Gophers. Yeah, it's holding. It's going to take it all the way back. The holding call was about the 28-29 yard line. Glenn Mason just wanted about. He was thinking, hey, maybe we need to call a timeout. Top of your screen's in the hole right in there. That's about the 28-29 yard line. That's where it happened. May have been Ryan Roth. Holding. Against the offense. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. So the penalty was either on, on Cuppy or on Ryan Roth. Roth is a junior from Kansas City, number 66, and Cuppy is a sophomore from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Boy, don't they love Cuppy? 6'7", yes. 330 wow. pounds. He's huge. Oh, boy. He's Can huge. he drive block? From the 19, first and 17 with the penalty. And the handoff goes to Fitzpatrick, grabbed by Jamison. Not much of a gain on the play. And a timeout is taken, I believe, by North Carolina State. Now they've got one left. Let's take a look at Brian Jamison from Swedesboro, New Jersey. I'm, I'm from close to Swedesboro. You know where that yeah. is? Yeah. Oh, it? do I know where that is? It's just south of Woodbury. Oh, Don't you I know. know. Hey, East it, of Amundsen. There's a Woodbury in Minnesota. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know it well. Yeah. So... The timeout taken by State, and they'll visit on the sideline. Golden Gophers, this season, set or tied 15 school records. And, of course, all this comes on the heels of a Sun Bowl appearance last season when they went 8-3. and three. And Glenn Mason told us, I said, well, how are you excited about being here? He said, oh, absolutely. There's only four teams in the Big Ten that went back-to-back -back bowls, and we're one of them. Yeah, Purdue, Michigan, Wisconsin, and, of course, the Gophers of Minnesota, yep. the four teams. From the Big Ten. It's a pretty strong company. Not there. bad at all. You better believe it. So North Carolina State has taken the timeout. Big Martellus Redmond, two rushing touchdowns, over 130 yards rushing tonight. Travis Cole took it in on a quarterback run for a touchdown, and they got a 27-yard field goal by Nystrom. And they led 24 to nothing. Second down, 14 outside the Golden Goal for 21. Cole hands off, and a flag is thrown, and that play is stopped in mid-motion as Renato Fitzpatrick was rumbling on the near Boy, side. They may, that may be the luckiest flag for NC State. The dead flag ball. Ball snap. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. That is eight Minnesota penalties, and tonight North Carolina State has had only one. Five of the eight penalties have been on the Golden Gopher offense. That'll stop the clock, 34 seconds. You start thinking about timeouts. How are you going to use them? Look at that, eight penalties. And you know, a lot of that comes with having that time off because Minnesota's last game was the week before Thanksgiving. Yes. And then they go like two or three weeks. They don't practice. You know, they're just kind of meeting. And then they get back into the flow for this football game. So a lot of, you know, you're not used to hearing that snap count just right. The quarterback's voice sounds a little different. They resumed during exams. Yeah. Second down and 19. Back at about the 17-yard line, the handoff goes to Redmond, and he's gobbled up by Brian Jamison. Nice play by Jamison. And they mark the ball at the 16-yard line. No gain on the play. The clock is stopped at 24 seconds before halftime. And I was wondering if uh, North Carolina State is going to take a timeout. They and did. they have, and they burn all of them now. They're done. They're out of it. Well, the, the, the shame for NC State is they, they got that first down, then had the penalty, so they, they ran out of timeouts. Well, they're and saying they didn't yeah, call the timeout. We didn't call a timeout. Who did? <laughs> and see, if they, can, if they can talk their way into this, what the official won't do is he won't start the clock until the snap. And he's saying, listen, 
You, uh, That's blew, you, you blew the fair catch at the other end of the field. Why don't you give me a break here and give yeah. us give us some time. Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator, who's just to the left of Chuck Amato there. He's the one that was arguing. He said, hey, we never called timeout. And what he's saying is it's third and 19. The chances of Minnesota getting the first down slim, they're going to need that timeout for their yeah, offense. exactly right. Well, he's trying to get that third down timeout so they can get the fourth down and then have to punt it. Yep. And if he's able to talk this one in, this is going to be a good one. Let's see what the, let's see what the see official some says. Some of that Bobby Bowden magic is going to carry <laughs> over. I think they're pointing to a player who called yeah. it. I think the player inadvertently called the timeout. Reset clock. 29 seconds, please. Well, it appears as though a North Carolina State player called the timeout without the authority of Chuck Amato to do so. Well, I think maybe James Walker, number 13, is the one that everyone pointed at. <laughs> you hate to get your name mentioned like that. Yeah, but, uh, Walker, just a freshman. You know, Zuber, and he wants to get that timeout, sees that clock ticking off. They would love to have that one back. So the Gophers are going to sit on it because North Carolina State is on a timeout, so they can just run out the clock on third and 19. So now they're in a no-win situation with this particular problem that they face, and the clock will continue to tick. It is now fourth down, and that should take us to halftime. Three rushing touchdowns by the University of Minnesota, two by Redmond in an outstanding first half on the ground. Redmond running for 137 yards as we send it downstairs to Craig Sager. Well, Coach, you're up 24 to 8, but after that dominating first quarter, how concerned are you that NC State's back in the game? Well, you know, they've got a high powered quarterback, they've got big play players on offense. Obviously, this game's not over. Our big problem is penalties. We're killing ourselves. I don't know how many penalties we had in that uh, second quarter, but far too many. we got to correct that. Eight in the first half. Tell us, Redmond, 130 yards, pair of touchdowns. Is he really on, or is the offensive line just that good tonight? Well, I think the offensive line's opening some pretty good holes there, and he's doing a good job of reading it and making the right cut, securing the football. But if we have one more offensive lineman and have a false start, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> hey, for a few weeks, give him a break. Yeah, I'll give him a break. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Let's go back to the oh, camera. That's great. Thank you, Craig. 24 to 8 at halftime. This is the Micron PC Dial from Pro Player Stadium in rainy Miami. The first half belonged to Minnesota and tailback Tellus Redmond. 130 yards and a pair of touchdowns as he has led the Golden Gophers to a 24-8 lead at intermission. Each year at this time, we present the Bobby Dodd Award to the coach whose team embellishes the fine traits of character displayed by Bobby Dodd's teams, both on the field and in the classroom. Tonight, it is my pleasure to announce the winner of the 2000 Bobby Dodd Award, Georgia Tech's own George O'Leary. It was supposed to be a rebuilding year, but O'Leary led the Yellow Jackets to a 9-2 season. They won their last seven games. They're going to a bowl for the fourth consecutive year, the first time that has happened in 50 years. Here is the Bobby Dodd winner, George O'Leary. I want to thank the Bobby Dodd Committee and the Bobby Dodd Foundation for uh, being the recipient of this great award. The name of Bobby Dodd, obviously, at Georgia Tech, that's a great honor. And uh, an honor that a lot of people should have a hand in the outstanding players this past year, coaches who did an outstanding job on the field coaching as assistant coaches and, and the Georgia Tech football program. So, again, I want to thank the people involved in this award and uh, uh, very honored to accept this award. and. Uh, in honor of Bobby Dodd and uh, named after a great Georgia Tech coach. Georgia Tech has the best winning percentage in bowl games of any team in the country. Coach O'Leary is getting his Yellow Jacks ready for the play in the Peach Bowl against LSU. We're also getting ready down in Bourbon Street, rivals in Miami for the Sugar Bowl. 
They were together last night for the first time in New Orleans. It didn't take long for the two teams to get into a ruckus. Several players were involved in a scuffle. Two were detained and questioned by the police. However, both schools and those involved are downplaying the incident. How's your eye? Huh? How's your eye? Oh, what? How's your eye? Mitch. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Got a nice shiner there. <laughs> Best question? It wasn't even that serious, you know, just talking a little trash. Um, you know, it was just, if, like I said, if it wasn't no rival, it's a rival now. It's, it has started. Again, from the information I've got from everyone, uh, uh, you know, our players were not instigating anything. I'm not saying who started or whose fault it was, but uh, our players, uh, you know, unless the police or somebody come forward and said our guy sucker punched somebody, I don't know what you can do about it. You know, you, I've got to trust our players to do the right thing. And um, and hopefully, uh, as we said, there will be a lot of other structured functions the rest of the week. And hopefully, uh, you know, that and with our players being smart and being wise about what to do, hopefully there won't be any further incidents. There are a lot of distractions in bowl games, but there's also a lot of pageantry, a lot of colorful incidences, traditions, and all that happen on the field and also in the stands. We thought you'd enjoy listening to one of the great traditions that accompany college football, the University of Minnesota Marching Golden Gopher Band. It's 24 to 8, and now for your halftime pleasure, we join the power sound of the South, the marching band from North Carolina State. Power Sound of the South, the marching band from North Carolina State, and now we go back up to our Power Sound in the boot. <laughs> Kevin and Dave. Okay, Craig, thank you very much. Kevin Harlan along with Dave Rowe, and we thank Craig Sager for bringing us that halftime. We thank University of Minnesota's offense for bringing up oh, some oh. outstanding highlights in that first half. Well, the highlights, it was a Redmond show that started off. He just has been Mr. Everything, averaging over seven yards a carry in his first half. He starts off with a sweep around the outside, goes in just about untouched. This is an instant replay, another one to the outside, <laughs> just touched back in, untouched. Then all of a sudden, Cole did a little fake to him and rolled out, got a bootleg, and they celebrated because that was Cole's hey. NC State came back, Rivers drove in the length of the field, seven complete passes in a row, and he hits Vanderbeer for that touchdown. So it, it really brought him back. 299 yards of offense. They, speaking of the University of Minnesota, had 10 plays of 10 yards or more, and they're averaging eight yards per play in the first half. But as Glenn Mason told Craig Sager as he was coming off the field, one thing that concerns him right now, the eight penalties, on his team, five of which have been assessed as offense. Yeah, he doesn't like that because that just that just breaks up the continuity of the offense. I think I saw a different bounce though a little bit in yeah. NC State. They really did. They came back, they drove the length of the field, and Rivers got a little bit more pop into him. Now, can their defense step up and stop Minnesota? That's the big question as we start this second half. And that has been the history of the Wolfpack this season, so they are used to this kind of circumstance. We're at halftime at the MicronPC.com poll with Minnesota, Carolina State, 24-8.
three rushing touchdowns, a pair of interceptions before you knew it. Minnesota was up 21 nothing. was still the first quarter. But Chuck Amato told his team to settle down. They've played better. You're back in it. What do you have to do now? We, we've got to go stop them on this first drive. We, we've got to kick off and go out there and stop the run, we, which we have always had a hard time doing. And we've got to, they're, they're testing our manhood again, you know, and to see how tough we are. And if we can stop them, force them to punt the ball, and get our offense back on the field, go in and score with the games. It's a 60 minute game. We got 30 more minutes left. Did you challenge your team's manhood at halftime? You sure did. You, you can be rest assured I did. <laughs> I, I believe you. Back up to Kevin. I love it. <laughs> That's what we want to hear, right? Craig, Craig asked the right question. <laughs> he Let always me tell you. does. <laughs> As you take a look at LeVar and Fisher, CC Defensive Player of the Year, there were some uh, good signs for North Carolina State toward the end of that first half. And there's Phillip Rivers, 13 of 23. One touchdown and two early interceptions, and that really set this offense back like you, you predicted so capably as the last drive went. They kind of got their form back. Well, I can tell you who they need to stop, and that's the man, yes. Redmond. He was unbelievable. They've got to stop it at the edges where they've got to come up. They've got to get to the outside, right outside the tackles. That's where he's had the most effective running yard. Now, what do assistant coaches do during halftime? I'll tell you exactly what they do. They stop at the food line. <laughs> Wait a minute now. <laughs> well, I think we've missed one of our. No, not that one. No, no. I wanted. There, thank you. This guy. There were there were three on there. He's, oh yeah! Look he, at there. He's one out. Nobody else has any. No, 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 no. He's he's got three. You're one. right. There's still there's still two there. They're going up there. <laughs> one is coming. One is coming down. <laughs> three. That's right. <laughs> See, they can see us. They're right next to us. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Glenn Mason may have a new shirt on, and the, uh, the uh, rain has stopped here in Miami for the time being, which is always good. Austin Herbert has the ball teed up at the 35-yard line. And the Gophers will send back Redmond and Ron Johnson. When you talk about the complexion of a football game, the tone, it's set on this first kickoff. And I'm sure Chuck Amato, I can promise you, if they stop them, they, they feel they're back in this football game. Nice kickoff and picked up inside the five-yard line by Ron Johnson and belted and brought the play at about the 25-yard line. There wasn't a whole lot of rushing room up ahead. And he comes down, and Johnson is ticked off as he goes after one of the North Carolina State players, Anthony Kaysom. Unfortunately, he's got one of his players holding him back. Ryan Keller, number one, just said, wait a minute. We don't need more penalties. It's a play by him. So now, now we're down to a half. He had three on there. <laughs> one, one he's got. He's already shoved one down. He's, Two have gone right yes, there. Yeah, right yes, right there. And now he's got a half left. This is unbelievable. This is an eating display that you just don't see that often. <laughs> I'm more intrigued with this than what we've seen first down and 10 from the 25. Here comes the hit by Riggs. The pass is away and incomplete down the sideline with the coverage applied by James Walker. Boy, did Cole get stuck in the back late on the play. That's what happened on the follow through. He got stuck. Backside's tough for a quarterback. Look at this all the way around the outside. Getting that pressure and pow, you run right through him. That's how linemen tackle. Pow. Man. I like that. Shane Riggs drilled him. Now at the 26, second down and 10. Redmond remains in the backfield. You can see the play distribution, Russian pass. Redmond gets it here. Nice block by Jake Cuppy. And he fumbled the ball, then he retrieved it, reeled it in. A flag was thrown and then picked up on the near side. And the ball is down at the 32 yard line, and LeVar Fisher. Wrapped up Tellus Redman, who got a lucky bounce, it looks like, on that fumble. Boy, it did. Look at him running to the football. You see 45. That's Burnett sliding to the football now. See if they don't get a hand in there. Oh, there's the ball out. Now look at that. It just bounced pulse right back on top of it. Now, heads up play. That's what you got to do if you're a running back and you fumble the football. You're the one who knows it's first. You got to go get it. Third down and four. Patterson, one of the four wide receivers. At the 32-yard line, good block. Here comes Cole. Here comes the rush. He's grabbed in the pass, thrown astray. A flag is down. Corey Smith 
was literally inside the uniform of Travis Cole. What great penetration the defense of the Wolfpack have showed to begin the second half. Yeah, what they did is they did a blitz from both sides now. Did they jump in the neutral zone too yep, early? they did. Ouch, that hurts. What they did, they were timing it. And that was a third and four play as well. Yeah. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, they brought a blitz from both the outside corners trying to get pressure on the quarterback. See if we see him jump right here. You're going to see. See right up at the top of the screen. Yep, he's in the middle. Look at that coming over there. And look at the play of Cole sliding back. He even gets the football off after he's been he's in the wrapped up um, mode. Okay. First down and 10 with Minnesota just outside their 37. Hand off to Redmond, pulling block by Hamilton. Nothing there. Great defensive play by Clayton White and Corey Smith, who shut the door and allowed no gain on the play and a loss of about two. Now, there's the difference when you make a runner like Redmond not run to the corner. When he has to change that direction and dip to the outside, you get him the old running the old east and west, they used to say. He ran out of real estate. Actually, he lost about two or three yards yes, on that play. he did. Back to the 34. He hadn't had many for no game. No. He has been very effective. Redmond remains in the game. Second down and 12 at the 34-yard line. Renewed fire with North Carolina State as they jump right there. Now the question is, were they induced? Yeah, I think Roth set up out of his stance. Prior to the snap, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That is the ninth penalty on Minnesota, the sixth on the offense. Remember what Glenn Mason told our Craig Sigrid, who's walking yeah. off at halftime. I don't know what I'm going to do if I see another one. Well, he just saw another one. I think it was Ryan Roth, who was the right guard, who jumped. Number 66. Now second down and 17, and push it back to about the 29-yard line. And now, if you're NC State, you can really come after him. Which they do, and he's tackled by Riggs. Redmond finds very little room to roam. A meager gain of three yards on the play up to the 32-yard line. Boy, Riggs is playing well in there. Didn't start the football game, but no. he's moved in and played really well. Really didn't start this season. No. He played well against Wake Forest in the last game of the regular season in the ACC. Just a sophomore getting a chance to get some time. And numbers are a problem with NC State. They're not deep. Third down, 15 from the 32. Again, four receivers. The shotgun snapped by Ben Hamilton. The pump fake, and here comes the rush, and the pass is caught by Redman. He's got a blocker ahead. That's Hamilton. Then he is side-swiped and brought down. Riggs jumps on him, but Brian Williams was the one that really caught him. He picks up 12 on third and 15, and Minnesota has got a punt, and State's defense does their job. Well, it's a good tackle. You come in here and just wipe out those legs. That's a position that a lot of times you see a running back fumble with from. But NC State has done what Chuck Amato said he had to do. They had to stop him. They had to get the football back. Now we'll see if Rivers and company can answer the call. Reigning second punt is coming up. He stands inside the 31. Deep back is Corin Robinson. Coming. Inside the 25, you think so? Yep, here they come. come. And the punt is blocked on the play. And blocked by Brian Williams and picked up by Jamison, who takes it inside the 20. And down at the Minnesota 19-yard line. I saw it all the way. What he did is he creeped in from his coverage on the outside, came down the line of scrimmage, and just darted in there. Nobody was going to be on the outside. Watch this. Right to your screen, you're going to see him come in a little low snap. Gives a little bit more time. Go to where the ball is being kicked. Brian Williams got it. And Jamison vacuumed it in and took it to the 19-yard line. See, Williams come from the outside. He had the outside coverage one-on-one -on -one against the, the wide outs. And what he did is they just gambled. They took a shot. It worked. And all of a sudden, Chuck Amato's got the momentum of this football game his team has. Simmons and Ray Robinson in the backfield from the 19-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for North Carolina State. And off to Robinson, and the reverse will go to Corin Robinson with the block from the quarterback and diving inside. Touchdown! What a play! With Rivers throwing the touchdown-making block on a 19-yard touchdown scamper. Boy, there was no denying Philip Rivers on this play. 
The quarterback gets out and he leads the play. Hands it off. It's a reverse. It's going to go to the top of your screen. Look at him coming back. Now watch Rivers. He's picking out. That's my man right there. Look at him just block right through. Almost knock him down. And Corin Robinson takes it in. And all of a sudden, we've got a different complexion in this football game. It's a 10-point game right now, and they're going to try for two. They successfully converted a two-point try in the first half. From the three-yard line, North Carolina State, three receivers sent out by Rivers. Robinson in motion. Rivers using the moving pocket. And the two-point catch to Eric Leak. It's 24-16, just like that, with three minutes gone in the third quarter. Boy, and what a catch by Leak. Did you see that? It wasn't a, it wasn't a perfect pass. It was awkward. He came down with it. Brian Williams blocks a punt. A 19-yard touchdown run by Corin Robinson. And a two-point reception right there made by Eric Leak. The MicronPC.com Bowl on the Superstation is brought to you by MicronPC.com, where our core strategy is to deliver customized, internet-centric business solutions direct to our customers. MicronPC.com. Think beyond the box. What a block this play. This play turns the football game around. Brian Williams from the left side of your screen comes across, dives right out in front, turned the entire complexion of this football game around. NC State recovers. That's what they had to do. They had to come out and stop Minnesota and then capitalize. This is the touchdown. And Rivers is the blocker out in front leading the play this time. Corin Robinson goes in for the score. And now you've got a Glenn Mason that's really concerned. Here's the two points. And this was a great catch by Leak. Look at him going back behind him. Had to actually turn back to get that football. And look at the young freshman. <laughs> you think he's not excited? 16 unanswered points by North Carolina State. Minnesota led this game 24 oh. to nothing. They were in total control. And, you know, it's almost like the button went off. But, uh, they took their foot off the accelerator. They've got to get back. They've got to get their composure back. They've got to be able to run the football. That's how they were so successful in that first quarter. And the kickoff will be taken by Redmond. Inside the 20, brought down hard by Carter. And a nice tackle made on the play as well by Coach Ray Jackson, who is a reserve running back. And the ball will be spotted at the 21. Chuck Amato now with a bit of swagger from his team and the Golden Gophers and coach Glenn Mason had a 24 nothing lead. It's been chopped to 24 16 with under 12 to play in the third. I think Glenn Mason told us about Travis Cole his quarterback yesterday. He said he's cool. He doesn't have any memory. He doesn't remember what's gone wrong. He's a leader out there. Well right now Minnesota needs Travis Cole to lead him. They need Redmond to run. They need Cole to lead this football team. To stay ahead. He has Redmond in the backfield from the 20 yard line. The fake handoff and the pass and dropped by Ryan Keller. A great stick put on him by Adrian Wilson. Incomplete pass. Second down and 10 coming up as we send it downstairs to Craig Sager. Well, this NC State defense obviously fired up. Brian Jamison, the outstanding defensive end who recovered the fumble on the block punt came to the sidelines, partially collapsed. They took him into the locker room right now. The initial report is they're going to give him an IV, and he should return. Kevin? It is humid. Thank you, Craig. And these guys are going to lose their fluids. Oh, yeah, they are. And that's a problem with NC State because we talked about them. They only had 63 players here. Sec 10, Minnesota at their 20. Patterson makes a fourth receiver. And a hurdling Tellus Redmond weaving his way into the secondary and brought down by Adrian Wilson as he gallops to the 36-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. Boy, and that's what Minnesota needed. They needed a play, and Redmond's the one who has answered it. Look at this little stutter step right there, jumps over top of one man, then he's off into the secondary, he makes nice cuts, just like the way he runs under control. He's the difference. Yes, he is. He is the difference. And you know what I'd do? If I was Travis Cole, <laughs> I'd just keep on handing it off to him. From the 35, first and 10. That's exactly what he does. Another broken tackle, in fact, two, and he is hit again in the secondary by Adrian Wilson. Close to a first down, just beyond the 45-yard line. Boy, he's gobbling up 10 yards at a carry. And C State doesn't stop him. They stopped him the first down. Now Chuck Amato is saying, hey, wait a minute. I didn't mean only the first time. you got to stop him again. That line has just been wonderful all night long. 
Hire, Burns, Hamilton, Roth, and Jake Cuppy, 75. They have been uh, one of the best parts of this offense all season long. Yeah, look at the size of them. There's Cuppy, number 75. They just get up in your face. There's 55, Ben Hamilton. Boy, he's a rock in the middle. You need that great center. He is one. And they get the first down. He is first team all big. Ten. He was the co-MVP of this team and a first-team All-America this past season. Interesting. He was picked for a Playboy All-American and turned it down. His faith. He's a very strong, uh, faithful man and just said that his faith was too strong to allow him to accept it. Interesting. First down and ten from the 45. Handoff goes to Redman. He skipped by Riggs, who lost the tackle. Then Fisher finished him off. And a loss of about a yard on the play, making it second down in about 11. But you know what? Rick slowed him down. Watch 92 come from the right side. Now he gets out there. He slows him down. Now I'm helped to get there. And LeVar Fisher comes up and sticks him in the nose. This man's played good football. He has. Tonight. He's had a great game. It's second down and 11, just shy of the 45. Patterson again, the one extra receiver in there. Ron Johnson has only caught one pass today, and they go outside. This is caught by Ryan Keller. He is stuck and nailed. Whacked on the play by Corey Lyons after a meager gain of two up to the 47-yard line. Well, you know, one thing that might be happening is Redman, he may be a little bit winded. He had 24, 25 carries in that first half. He may be a little bit tired. We talked about, uh, about him having to run the football. Look at his jersey. There's a warrior. He's got green all over it. He's been down on the ground. He's carried the football. He's a sophomore for Glenn Mason. Redman is in third down and eight from the 47-yard line. Again, the four was deployed, and Travis Cole takes it. A good block by Cuppy and a pass whistling out of the reach of wide receiver Ron Johnson. Coverage by James Walker. Boy, and Walker fell down. Walker fell down on the play and still was there. Yeah, top of your screen right there. Watch him fall down on the play right here. He actually gets run over. And they got a punt. It's yeah. fourth down for Minnesota. So the defense of North Carolina State does their job again as Greening sets the punt. Last one was blocked. The low snap here and gets it down the middle. Corn Robinson was hit. Did not have a chance to make the catch. Another Minnesota penalty. And that hit was put on him by Andre Brown. Well, that's personal foul, 15 yards from the spot. So that'll be out past the 25-yard line. Where's the discipline of this Minnesota team going? Well, he's signaling fair catch right there. You see him waving it. Look at that Ooh, hit. Boy, like a torpedo. There's no denying flags on that play. Boy, Glenn Mason is upset. That is the 10th penalty called on the Golden Gophers as they've begun to unravel late in the first half and continue in the second. North Carolina State has scored 16 unanswered points. Kevin Harlan, Dave Rowe, and Craig Sager in Miami. Minnesota leads at 24-16. And moments ago, after getting drilled on a penalty, Corn Robinson had to be reeled off the field by his head coach, Chuck Amato to uh, get him out of what was a, a pretty good verbal sparring with the guy that nailed him and drew the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty as we send it downstairs to Craig Sager. Well, after a 24 to nothing lead by Minnesota, the action is now on the NC State sidelines. With me, Michael Atkins, co-president of Micron, PC.com. Halftime, million-dollar kick. You almost got to give the money away. How confident were you? What happened? And uh, how do you feel about the fact that you didn't have to give the money away? Well, actually, uh, we were actually looking forward to handing him that check. Uh, we, we had it insured, um, but uh, uh, I watched him all week. I watched his kicking. Uh, he, I, I thought he had it. I thought he was going to make it, and uh, he's just a few yards short, but uh, he did a great did a great job. You're rooting for him at halftime. You're also rooting for NC State to make a ball game out of this. How excited are you that we have one? Hey, we, we are very, very excited with, uh, with, with the ball game where it stands right now. We've got 1,600 answered points by uh, North Carolina State. And we've got a ball game on our hands. We got to we do. One. Let's send it back up to Kevin and Dave. All right, Craig, thank you. And at the 29-yard line, it's North Carolina State. First down and 10 yards to go. The momentum has clearly oh. shifted to the Wolfpack. Oh, huge, huge change. And it was started on defense. They came out and they stopped them. And then Rivers took them, drove them the length of the field, and the complexion, the whole atmosphere changed. First and 10, and he loops a pass to the side, looking for 
Brian Peterson incomplete, and the flag is down, and an incomplete pass. Now, I wonder if Peterson came up out of his stance early. Both side. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Reset and game clock. 9-41. Yeah, watch Robinson, bottom of your screen. Watch what he does. Comes up here and watch. He's just going to step off sides. Oh. Yep. And then he just kind of walks over here. Look, the ball's going to go over top of his head. Just knew he made a mistake. So push it back to the 24. First and 15, Ray Robinson's in the backfield. Three wide receivers sent out by freshman quarterback Phillip Rivers. Rookie of the year in the ACC. Good block and a quick throw, and it's caught by Robinson, dancing with the secondary and forced out of bounds across the way by Andre Brown. The gain is to the 37. It's a pickup of 13 yards on the play. It'll be second and short. Boy, and Robinson can do so much when he gets the football. Drives off right here, then just comes in, makes a target. Now look, he doesn't slip right there. He gets to the outside. He's got long arms. He keeps people away from him. He's a threat every time. you got to cover him close. He needs a lot of attention. Sophomore Jackson has checked in in the backfield. It's second down and two with the Wolfpack outside their own 37. 24-16 Minnesota. The short drop, the quick throw, reeled in beautifully by Jackson. Picks up the first down, scampers to the 45, and a pickup of eight. Belted by Mike Lehan out of bounds. And that was another great catch yeah, out of the backfield by the Wolfpack. Yeah, watch this. Circle out of the backfield, the right of your screen. Look at this. One hand catch <laughs> just lays it out there. We talked about Rivers' delivery. That's a soft delivery when you can just catch it one hand. That's a very good point because he's had a couple receivers do the exact same exactly. thing tonight. Yeah, he throws a soft ball. The, the, the head of the ball, the point of the ball is up, and receivers love that. Backup quarterback Owen Hannum is a receiver who will be at the bottom of your screen. Rivers has hit the last nine in a row. From the 45, first and ten with the shotgun snap. Quick throw. It's caught on the play by Lee Michael. Breaks the tackle again. And finally brought down by Wiley after a 30-yard gain all the way to the Minnesota 25-yard line. When if you break the seam, you can run forever, and that's what Leak does. He's right in the slot. Watch him go downfield. Number 10 catches it right off the line. Now he just breaks the seam, breaks the tackle there. Now it's the foot race. Gets a good block right in here. Comes back. Look at right there. Number three coming down there. He's making a block. on Everybody's trying to get in this. This is just a changed NC State game in the second half. They've converted two two-point conversions, 16 unanswered points, a touchdown pass and a touchdown run from the 25 of Minnesota, first down and 10. Handoff to Ray Robinson, got a great block inside from Jarvis Borum and burrows his way to the 18-yard line. Justin Hall makes the tackle after the gain of seven. Well, we talk about how the Pens to run you can see the play fake really draws back because Rivers looks like he's going to just do a play fake and run back and throw the pass. And Robinson just makes that good little slash up the middle for good yardage. They are moving the football at will. Minnesota, they have just, it's almost like they watered down. Now they got to get cranked back up again. Yeah, confused Glenn Mason watches second down and three from the 18 of the Gophers for the pack. Fake handoff. Good block by Borum. Great time for Rivers who rolls out of the pocket. He's chased by Riley. He's chased by Craig White and forced out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Well, I watched Ray Robinson, number five. He circled out of the backfield. Now watch Corin Robinson, too. Ray Robinson comes out back. Look at Corin Robinson. Look at him. He's waving. I'm running across here. I'm wide open. <laughs> Throw to me. Of course, Rivers running for his life to the back of the end zone. That time they had they had two of them open. That's it because I'll tell you, the defense, you're trying to get pressure on him. He had all day to stand back there and throw. Minnesota with some late substitutions on defense. They were almost caught third down and five with North Carolina State at the Minnesota 20-yard line. Shotgun snapped by Green. Good block by Borum. A leaping pass incomplete. Looking for the fullback Tremaine Simmons. Incomplete pass. Boy, and John Schleck got good pressure in there. Number 93 was barreling down the throat of Phillip Rivers. 93's defensive tackle, look at Schleck come in there. You know it, you see it, and he's running hard. Get the umpire. Yeah. And the umpire is a, a dead object when it hits him. Can't exactly. bounce off. Yep. Part of the field. That's right. He is part of the field. 
It's going to be a good little stretch right here now. Uh, they might call that fellow who kicked at halftime. Yeah. It's about the same distance. Here's Kent Passingham, who will try a third yard field goal attempt. He's got the distance with the wind at his back, and he puts it in, and it is good. And now 19 unanswered points by the Wolfpack of North Carolina State. With eight minutes exactly to play in the third from Miami, Minnesota 24, State 19. North Carolina State showing their head coach, Chuck Amato, who is a former Wolfpack linebacker known for spearheading the White Shoes defense. Amato helped his football team win an ACC co-championship. And then, on top of his football exploits, he also posted two undefeated seasons as a wrestler, earning two ACC wrestling titles. And his team has wrestled back from a 24-0 deficit tonight to bring it to within 5, 24 to 19. There is another guy who played around that same era at North Carolina State, a guy by the name of Bill Cowher. Oh, yeah. Who Pittsburgh. set the all-time single season North Carolina State rushing um, uh, a tackling record of 190 plus tackles. Now the coach, of course, of the Pittsburgh Steelers of the NFL. A pretty good history for Chuck Amato as Austin Herbert sets to kick off Redman and Ron Johnson as you take a look at our deep back for Minnesota. Hey, how about this little fact? Amato was a linebacker coach when Bill Cowher was there. Yeah. How you like, oh, I like, what are you thinking, Dave? Oh, Dave, Dave, you're all over this show. Uh, I'm going to give some, I uh, better not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he kicks it out of the end zone. He got a wind of about 15 miles an hour here in South Florida and back of you. It is easy. So get it out, and Ron Johnson will leave it in the end zone to touch back to the 20 yard line. All right, I'm going to give the credit where the credit's due. Jay Hoover, our producer, yeah. told me that in my ear. That doesn't surprise <laughs> me. That doesn't surprise me at all. The wind is uh, picking up. The rain has stopped, thankfully, for the quality of this game, but the wind has been pretty constant. In fact, picked up by a couple of miles an hour as this game has gone on. So here is the second half for Minnesota. Two possessions, 11 plays. 16 yards, one block punt, which set up a touchdown for North Carolina State. They begin with four receivers, including Tony Patterson, Mays, and Keller. First and 10, handoff to Redmond, runs outside, chased by Fisher, and banged by Wilson. And very little gain on the play, maybe a yard, up to the 22-yard line. It'll be second down and nine. And I want to tell you, there were about seven red shirts running after him. He had to turn sideways because there was no place to turn up field. Everybody is running after Redmond right now. It's a different NC State team. Now, if you're Travis Cole, you got to get out there. You just got to suck it up a little bit. You got to calm them down. Just complete a couple passes, do something well, run the football. But uh, boy, I'm telling you, this is a fired up NC State team. They are really coming off the ball fast. Second down nine from the 21, and a run by Cole as he is chased by Locklear and Belton. It may have been a face mask on the play, but I see no yellow on the field right now. Now it drops across the way. Locklear with the tackle. Let's watch it again. Yeah, Locklear gets the face mask right there and see he uses what he uses it to tackle with. That should be the big one. That's not the inadvertent where the yeah, hand just gets on the mask. That is not your garden variety no. face mask. Four throw foul. Face mask. Kansas defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. Boy, he made a great effort wow. to get over there, but boy, you talk about changing momentum now. That's a play that can spearhead this Minnesota offense, get him a little bit more on track. Moving him to the 45-yard line. They got it first down and 10, but Cole seems unaffected. What did uh, Glenn Mason uh, say? He's unaffected by those yep. things. He's, said he's cool. Very cool. Said you like a quarterback with no memory. He doesn't remember last interception he threw the last bad play. Just goes right on to the next one. He's changing the play here. First and 10 from his 45 and a quick throw to Keller. He finds a dead spot and he's grabbed and brought down by Brian Williams who blocked a punt earlier in the game for North Carolina State. It's a gain of eight on first and 10 to the state 47. Boy, and Cole has had a lot of success with that little slot where they run two guys deep and he comes back in, throws inside. And Ryan Keller, number one, came down with the pass that time. That's been Cole's bread and butter. When he's gotten in trouble, throw that little slot receiver. Second down and two inside the Wolfpack 47. Handoff to Redmond. 
breaks a tackle on the play of Jamison, tumbles ahead to the 41-yard line, brought down by LeVar Fisher, and picks up a Minnesota first down. And you know what? Look at how slow Redmond is getting up. He's got to be getting tired. We talked about the, the humidity out here. They came from Minnesota down here. You get in this heat, it's a lot different. And I just think Redmond just doesn't have the bounce right now. He's carried the ball, what, 26, 27, 8 times? 28 times wow. for 174 yards. He's got to be panting hard. Four receivers again, 42-yard line of North Carolina State. Blitz is on. He's going to find Shane Riggs on top of the running back, Tellus Redmond. Again, Riggs with a wonderful piercing of that line. Well, I think Riggs has found himself a spot. That's what Chuck Amato has been looking for. And how about Redmond? He just seems tired. I'm serious. 29 carries now? He's got to be getting tired. He's tired, too. He's gasping for air. Second down and 11. 23 carries is his most this season. They get 33 from the 43-yard line. A quick pass incomplete. And that was intended for Ron Johnson, broken up by Brian Williams. Boy, and Williams did a good job. What he did is he didn't put his arm on the receiver. Watch this one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to be cut inside. Now watch him get his arm around there and knock it down. That trail arm, a lot of times you'll put that trail arm on the receiver, and that's the interference. He didn't do it. Boy, and how about holding Ron Johnson? About a receiver that had 59 catches this year, held him to one catch so far. They've thrown to him three times tonight. Third and 11 from the Wolfpack, 43. Cole with time, good block by Cuppy across the middle. It's caught by Redmond, needs to get down to the 32, and he is stuffed at the 41 and a gain of three by Corey Lyons. Now it'll be fourth down. And looks like Minnesota is going to send out their punting unit. The defense of North Carolina State is uh, tightened the defensive screws in the second half. Well, there's no better punter than Greening in, in this situation. Get him down inside in the coffin corner. Make him drive a long way. He'll be punting into a wind. Timeout taken by Minnesota. They've got two left. Boy, and that's an odd call. Take a timeout. You're on the 40-yard line. Punt it anyway. Why not just take a five-yard penalty? You got the greatest yeah. kicker in college football, the distance, man. Well, you know what? They may have had either one less or one too many players on the field. And if that's the case with that block punt fresh in their minds, why take, the, why take the chance? Very good point. You can see a lot more concern on Glenn Mason's face. He was rolling along there 24 to zip, arms folded, everything's going well, and the, the wheels have kind of fallen off a little bit. I mean, his team is still leading 24 to 19, but he's got to have concern because NC State has scored 19 unanswered points. Chuck Amato told us and told Craig Sager on the sideline, he challenge his team's manhood at halftime they were down 24 to 8 and at one time in this game north carolina state trailed 24 to nothing 19 unanswered wolfpack points as greening sets again now the perfect punt for him is in, inside about the eight nine yard line get it to the coffin corner and don't allow nc state to rush the football back here they come but the punt is high and hanging and not very long but inside the 20 and eventually down down the play by the Golden Gophers and picked up by Tony Patterson, a 23-yard punt by Greening. MicronPC.com bowl here in Miami is tight with the Gophers on top by five. Well, at one point, NC State was down 24 to nothing. Freshman quarterback Philip Rivers was struggling. We put his father and high school coach on the spot, Steve Phillips. We promised we'd come back if we turned things around. How was he able to get his composure and start moving the offense? Well, you know, I, he's a smart kid, and, and he just had to have some more patience. And the defense really, I think, is what sparked us because uh, they, they stopped him and were able to get the ball. And, and uh, the offensive line is giving him some protection. The guys are catching the ball and running with it well. And, you know, I, I can tell you, as a dad, you don't ever give up on your son. And as a fan, I've learned not to give up on this team. And as a coach, you do not have to give up on him as well. That's right. Well, yeah, he's he's um, he loves this team and this and this coaching staff and and um, this team. You, well, you can see it's a different team than it was the first quarter when we're struggling. We're kind of in a fog and and everybody's uh, playing at the, playing a different level right now. Comeback is not complete yet. 24-19. Good luck the rest of the way. That's right. We got a lot of football yet to play. All right, Kevin. 
like that guy to be my, I got a good dad as it is, <laughs> but that guy sounds like a good dad himself. Sure does. That's great. Thank you, Craig. Great interview, and I can see why Philip Rivers is the kind of kid he is. The typical coach, you know, sitting yeah. there real calm, yep. analyzing everything. Inside, your heart's just racing for your son. After the Minnesota punt, North Carolina State begins it first and 10 from their 18-yard line. Rivers going deep and looking for Robinson. Oh, oh, what a catch made at the 49-yard line. Incredible 33-yard gain. He beat cornerback Mike Lehan from Minnesota. You talk about stretching out. This is just a go. Watch the concentration on Corin Robinson. Look at this stretch out there. Great to get down. There's a flag on the field right now as the dad of the quarterback is watching. <laughs> There's North Carolina State. Oh, the encroachment. The, the players were out inside that little zone that they have where they have to stay oh, back. Oh, let them have some fun. My That's goodness ridiculous. gracious. <laughs> you know, I know they got to stand back, and they would have after the play, but let them enjoy a bowl experience. What a throw, what a catch. Look at this. Stretching out, look at this. And makes a good adjustment right there. Look at that. Looks the ball in. Great hand. That's a great catch. That is a spectacular catch. I mean, oh. He's one of the best that's ever played in Raleigh for North Carolina State. I think that flag was just a warning. Right. Yeah. Well, I can understand that, but it is an exciting time from the 49, first and 10. Pass by Rivers, hits Ray Robinson, and Minnesota is all over that play. No gain on the play. Tackle made by Travis Graham from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, playing near his hometown. What Minnesota needs to do here, they need to have a stop. They are in the huddle there, and I can tell you in the defensive huddle, I've been there a lot of times. And what you do is you look for one guy to step up, and that's what Glenn Mason. Now, when you got your hands up on your hips, it means you're tired. <laughs> yeah. I want to tell you, you're drawing air. And they're big guys. They played hard tonight. They need a stop. Second down, 10, 49-yard line. They put Tremaine Simmons in the backfield. Shotgun snap from Derek Green. And a dump across the middle, incomplete, looking for the fullback, the aforementioned Tremaine Simmons, incomplete pass. I didn't know that might have been for Corin Robinson. When he came across right there, I wondered if, I wondered who this was coming. Look for the right of your screen, see if it wasn't going to number three. Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> Two guys right there. Boy, if he caught that, he was going down the sideline. He was flying. His 33-yard reception moments have brought this crowd to their feet. down and 10. You know what I do? Go right back to him. You might. He's yeah. done it before. Well, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. He's at the bottom of your screen right here. Leak is in motion. Shotgun snap. The block by Simmons. Here comes Rivers. He's got to get to the 38, and the pass is dropped by the receiver crossing Willie Wright, who plays tight end, a converted wide receiver. The young freshman upset with himself on the pass, and they've got to pump the ball. Four drop North Carolina State passes tonight. Yeah, they were in the hands right there. And I think what happened, what Phillip Rivers is so upset about, when he got forced out of the pocket, he lost Corin Robinson. He went across field, and he was running out there and just nearly never really kind of settled down and found his wide receiver. But you're right, dropped pass. Norm Chow is there with his legs crossed. I, I know he's on the phone right now on the bat phone, and here's the kick by Herbert. And Redmond will go. Great bounce for North Carolina State. And down to the five yard line. And down by the long snapper, Danny Young. A 44 yard punt by Austin Herbert, who is a freshman and has had some very nice punts tonight. And that one is effective as he's had. And now he is marooned Minnesota at their own five with 3.45 to play here in the third quarter. And North Carolina State having scored the last 19 points of this game. Well, if I'm Travis Cole and I'm in that huddle right there, I know Redmond's tired. You know who I'm going to go to? Ron Johnson. I'm going to find him. He's got to get open. They need to. Redmond is just, he's just so out of gas. Look at this. Redmond just, that's the punt. First and 10. Here's the handoff from the five-yard line, and it goes up the middle. And Redmond gets the carry, and a tackle made by Sh Sean Riggs, and it's a gain of five on the Markham at the 10. That is one warrior there. I'll tell you one thing. He could play for me. As hard as he's run tonight, look at the grass on his helmet all over his uniform. 
He just keeps on getting up, walking back to the huddle. You know he's got to be tired. He's got to be. Boy, this is a huge series for both teams. Minnesota's got to drive out of trouble. NC State, they're trying to get a stop, get the football back on their side of the territory. Second down, five from the 10. Great time here. The line doing a whale of a job in the pass. Ricochets off the fingertips of a leaning Ron Johnson. And the coverage applied by Brian Williams. Yep. It's incomplete. And that was good coverage by Brian Williams. One-on-one -on -one coverage. And he went to Johnson, just like I thought. Right to your left of your screen. It's a long out pattern. Look at the coverage right there with him. Gets the hands up there. Johnson just could bring that one down. Oh, and listen to this crowd. This is going here. You'll know if Minnesota makes it or not. Just outside the 10 or inside the 10. It's third down and five. Hamilton, the All-America center with the shotgun snap. Here comes the quarterback. Cole has to get to the 16-yard line and stopped on the play by Sean Locklear. A freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina, and comes up with the big play, and Minnesota has got a punt again here in the second half. Well, when your quarterback scrambles, you've got to hustle to get to him. Good play there, number 94, Locklear. What he does is he sheds his blocker, gets over there, and stops him two yards short. And I'll tell you what, let's go back to the punt by Herbert, who got Minnesota at their five. North Carolina State's going to have great beginning field position if they don't turn it over. Greening's punt, and it was almost blocked, and it's a low-line drive, landing at the 45, bouncing to the opposite 45, and rolling to the 41-yard line. 25-yard punt, so Greening does about as good as he can do with the kind of pressure on him in the shadow of his own crossbar. And there was a flag. flag yeah, the late flag thrown at the 47-yard line in Minnesota territory. Heaven knows, Glenn Mason has seen too many of those yeah. tonight. He's hoping it's not on him. Usually these are defensive penalties. You're right again. Boy, Wait that's going to hurt him. Uh, NC State had the ball around the 41, 42-yard line. It's going to take him back 15 yards. It's a spot foul from where the end of the kick, and they didn't even get a return. Look at Chuck Amato. Where's he took that? <laughs> Think that man's not intense? If I'm that line judge, I'm worried about the uh, former two-time ACC undefeated wrestling champion yelling in my ear. <laughs> first one foul on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, when you look up intensity, it's got his picture there. I can promise you that's a that man is upset. You see, they let the they let the punt go. There's no reason to block. There's no reason to take a shot like that. And it's 20 yards away from where uh, where the ball was down. But for Minnesota, it's a huge break. Instead of being out the 40-yard line, now it's back at the 27. So it could have been outstanding field position. It's uh, right now just very ordinary from the 27. We've got Ray Robinson and Simmons in the backfield. First down and 10 yards to go. 2-12 remaining in the third quarter. All three timeouts remaining for North Carolina State. They got Peterson in motion. Rivers wants him to continue to the other side. They're blocking, and now it is deflected in the middle. Up the middle, that ball was tipped and touched, and Schlecht was up there in the middle, along with Maurice White. And they were in the face of the quarterback. Well, when you can't get up into the quarterback, and what you do is you get those arms up. That's exactly what they did. They got those hands up and deflected that football. I think Maurice White was yeah. the one to get it. He was. I sure do. I think that, too. Just a freshman getting a chance. They really like his ability. They, they think that he's... He's got size. He can move real well. They think he's very, very agile. They really like the way he plays. He's got a good motor. Second down, 10 from the 27-yard line for Rivers. Fake end around goes to Ray Robinson, following a block by Willie Wright and only a yard on the play. It's a nice defense by Minnesota, and the tackle is made again by Maurice White along with Karan Riley. And there's someone we haven't heard a lot about, Riley, today. Yeah, he's been very quiet. The last game he played, he had four sacks against <laughs> Iowa. I know, and could have had two or three other ones. He was terrific. Well, hey, I think that's really been a good matchup there for him, number 68 against Riley. Of course, the sack master, look at that, 13 sacks. 20 tackles for losses. That's behind the line of scrimmage. He's led the Big Ten in just two years, third down and nine. 27-yard line, the pass across the middle, caught by Peterson, breaks a tackle, Ooh. then whacked by Andre Brown, and he should have achieved the first down near the 39-yard line. On third and nine, he picks up 10 yards for the Wolfpack. 
Well, this is that underneath screen. What you do is you just throw the ball underneath. Now you pick up those linemen and watch what he does on the tail end. Watch Peterson right there dive for the first down. Almost looked as if he knew exactly where the marker was. And it gets the first down for Coach Chuck Amato with the third quarter clock winding down to the final minute and 12 seconds to play in the third from the 39. First down and 10. Robinson and Simmons in the backfield with Willie Wright, the tight end, repositioning himself. And Rivers going deep down the side. Another great acrobatic catch by Robinson. He gets by one defender, then another. And running across the field with Leak is Clocker. He's out of bounds inside the Minnesota five. Eli Ward shoved him out of bounds. A terrific block by wide receiver Eric Leak in a 58 yard pass completion to the acrobatic Corin Robinson. What a catch. Look at this. He's looking back at the ball one on one. He stops and comes back. Look at the concentration. He had to catch that football now. You're right. He picks up a good block by Leak. Right. Oh, Leak is a little bit farther downfield. There he is. And again, just makes it to the cornerback. That speed is a killer. Five catches for Robinson, 127 yards, and that gain again was good for 58. Wow. First and goal from the two. Handoff, Ray Robinson. Dives, he's airborne, and he is in for the North Carolina State touchdown. North Carolina State has their first lead tonight. They have scored 25 unanswered points. This is incredible. Just go up the middle. Don't get fancy. Now watch what he does. He leaps right here from about the three-yard line, gets on top of the paddle. Now he comes down and gets another surge when he gets his feet back down on the ground. Yeah, he never hit the ground. No, that's exactly what happened. He leaped up on top of the backs and then came down. When he got those feet, he just pushed on in. But how about the change in this game? At one time, I mean, we were about ready to start eating hot dogs. Two two-point conversion trying. Owen Hannon is in the game, and he does not get the first down or the uh, two-point pass away. John Schleck shoved him, and the quarterback Philip Rivers became a wide receiver in motion to the near side with Hannum in the backfield. And for the first time tonight, they do not convert the try. Now Rivers, you're right. <laughs> Look at he's in motion. He's going. He's coming in motion, hoping to get open. Again, he's going to come underneath right here. But the Minnesota gets the pressure on the quarterback, throws it underneath. But that, that ball was going to go to Rivers all the way. I say, get your hand off my throat. So Robinson's touchdown run of two yards. The missed two-point try. And it's 25 to 24, North Carolina State, with their first lead tonight with 25 unanswered points. Just an incredible turnaround. I mean, everybody was ready to go home. The game was about over 24 to zip. Minnesota was just driving them off the football, and Chuck Amato has turned this football game. And look at Glenn Mason. He is just beside himself. He should be. Oh. And these are the big Don Johnson on the left and Corin Robinson on the right. And the difference tonight oh. between those two that were leaders on their respective teams all season yeah. long. Yeah, both of them 1,000-yard receivers. 25 points unanswered, scored by North Carolina State over the last 16 minutes and 18 seconds. Led and orchestrated by freshman quarterback Phillip Rivers. Minnesota has got to be in a state of shock. Oh, they do. Now what do you do? You just have to take a deep breath if you're Minnesota. Get back into flow. Herbert kicks off, and this goes out of bounds. This goes out of bounds. So this will help Minnesota and give them some decent beginning field position. Well, you got to find somebody other than Redmond to take a little bit of pressure off your off of your offense. And again, I'm just I'm mystified. I'm, I'm just I'm looking at Ron Johnson. I'm thinking to myself, they've only thrown to him three times. He's got one completion. Kick off out of bounds. By rule, ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. There's Johnson who caught 59 passes this season. 11 touchdown receptions. He led the Big Ten in receiving yards. Now he is one of four receivers 
for Travis Cole. First and 10 from the 35. Hand off to Redmond. Got a block on the play from Cuppy. Runs over Wilson, who makes a good hit on him, along with James Walker. And a first down run. And when in doubt, give yeah, it to Redmond, who picks Redmond. up 12, who's got 190 yards rushing tonight. Well, maybe he's not out of gas. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. That was a good-looking 12-yard run really was. Right there. That was a good run. I think the hole was a lot wider, too. Good blocking up front. Cuppy and Roth got a good seal on their play, and it just came right off that, uh, right off their tail. Up to the 47-yard line in first and 10. Literally just seconds remaining in the third quarter. Cole with a lot of help in the offensive line. The pass down the sideline. Caught the front out of bounds by Tellus Redmond. Or did they mark him in? Out of bounds. He caught it. At the 30-yard line, he was one-on-one -on -one with linebacker LeVar Fisher. Did you see what Fisher did that time? He ran with his hands out. He knew the pass was coming. Right of your screen. Fake right there to Redmond. Now Fisher's got him all by himself, number 44. Now watch what Fisher does right here. Puts his hands in front, and he almost catches the football. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you one thing. That's scary when you're running with your back and you know the ball's coming. Five seconds to play here in the third. Second down and 10 with Minnesota at their own 47. Hand off to Fitzpatrick who is wrestled down by Fisher crossing midfield into North Carolina State Territory at the 49. And that is how our quarter will end. Gain of four on the play. The fourth quarter awaits us. Minnesota led 24 to nothing. Now they trail 25-24 from Miami in Pro Player Stadium. North Carolina State's touchdown before halftime, I think, was about as big home. It set the momentum for their third quarter, 17-0 shutout of Minnesota. They lead it. North Carolina State does 25-24. North Carolina State has had its share of great receiving players from Mike Quick, the 1980 recipient of the Dick Christie Award, to Haywood Jeffries, who won the Gary Rowe Award for most receptions in a season, and Torrey Holt, who set the league mark for career receiving yards in 98. Holt was named the A. CC Football Player of the Year. Outstanding speed, and I'll tell you this, Corin Robinson, he ranks right with him. I mean, just a sophomore, Chuck Amato said a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of talk about him possibly coming out into the, end, into the NFL, and of course, Chuck Amato turned around and said, hey, I just don't think he's ready yet. Well, he stepped it up a notch today. When they needed him, he has responded. And Philip. <laughs> with a uh, wonderful day going so far. He has 10 school or ACC records in his freshman year as a quarterback for North Carolina State. Third and six. Miami has missed their last six third downs. And Cole throws a pass. A flag is down. Oh, Ron Johnson makes the grab at the 30-yard line. But let's see what the flag is all about. And, yep, it's against... North Carolina State. Boy, and Ron Johnson made a great adjustment that time. Pass interference is going to go against NC State. It's going to go against Walker. But Johnson slowed down, came back inside, and still caught the football. Bottom of your screen is just one-on-one -on -one right here. You see the hand right there. That's the hold. Now he comes from out of bounds back inside. Now he's allowed to come That's back in. That's a penalty. Well, he's allowed to come back in because he was forced out. He oh. didn't run out. So it's first and 10 from the 31. 18 yard gain right there. And the handoff goes to Redmond. Grabbed and brought down by Corey Smith at the 27 after a gain of four, setting up second down and six. Now I can promise you that Glenn Mason and his staff had a talk with their offense saying, hey, you've got to take the pressure off the defense. You can't go three and four and punt the ball and give it back to them. You see a very different. Minnesota sideline right there. Glenn Mason really into this football game. He came out and told his offense, you've got to move the football downfield. Get some points. 25 unanswered points. That's incredible. Well, the defense has been just as good as the offense has been. It's second down and six from the 27. A pass incomplete. Looking for Johnson. Coverage was applied by LeVar Fisher. It'll be third down. And I saw Cole that time. What he did is he told him, he said, hey, you're supposed to come to the inside. He threw it behind him, but he's supposed to come to the inside, and Cole walked forward. There's some frustration going on right there. Johnson's back there saying, hey, wait a minute now. 
six times he's been thrown to only two receptions they put good coverage on him but he's the one that you've got to go to in these situations you got third down six seven yards to go he's the man third down and six from the 27. Travis Cole who began hot has slowed down a bit here's Redmond he's had a great night as he zigzags the field breaking a tackle of white tumbling ahead inside the 12 and to the 11. a 16 yard meandering gain by Tellus Redmond and a first down for Minnesota at the 11 yard line of North Carolina State. Now look at the size of that hole right there. Now he's just looking for areas to run right in here. He digs and he slips a little bit in the sod in the middle of the field. You can see he was upset but that was a great call draw play. You're thinking throw the football Redmond. Look at that 210 yards first and 10 from the 11 yard line. And cough to Redmond. Good block outside by Keith Matthews, a wide receiver, and the gain is good for four. The tackle made by Brian Williams, and he's down to the Wolfpack seven-yard line. Well, you know, as I look at the style of Redman, I really like it. He runs under control. He's got those quick feet. His feet are coming down. It's not long strides. They're little quick feet. They pop along the ground real quick, and he can make cuts. Look at that. Career rushing tonight. This new career high. Just a sophomore. He's got two more years if he wants it. Derek Burns has been taken out at the guard, and they've got Eric Larson in there. And the handoff to Redmond, and the nice tackle made by Fisher with the gain on the play of about a yard on second down and six. Mark him at the six yard line. Now, watch Fisher on this play, number 44. You talk about darting in here. Sound coming around the outside. Now, watch him just come in there. One back, you know who's going to get it. Just going right there. That offensive line of Minnesota was controlling NC State. They had a good five, six yards on that play had Fisher not made the tackle. So the left side of that line is higher at the tackle and Larson at the guard. Third and long four at the six of North Carolina State. Cole using the moving pocket, looking one way. Here comes the rush. He's being chased. He's hemmed in. He throws. It's almost picked off by Williams at the five. Oh. Incomplete pass as the Wolfpack defense was all over Minnesota quarterback Travis Cole. If Cole had thrown an interception there, he wouldn't have wanted to come off the side of the field. They drove for a good field. A little bit of pressure on him. Now watch number 29. He's got his hand on that football right there. All you got to do is catch it. Two hands. Oh, Brian Williams misses a huge one. Minnesota's going to try to take another lead. They've got Dan Nystrom in, a 23-yard try. He's already hit all tonight of 27 yards. This was good from 23 yards, which gives Minnesota a lead now of 27 and flags all over the field. It's 27-25, but two flags are inside the 10-yard line. Well, there's a lot going on after the play. That kick was, the teams are actually starting to come off the field. I'm wondering if someone might be put out of this football game. So the bleeding has stopped for Minnesota. And we'll talk about the big penalty against Glenn Mason's team when we come back. MicronPC.com Bowl on the Superstation is brought to you by Progressive Auto Insurance. Not what you would expect from an insurance company. For a competitive quote, go to Progressive.com and by MicronPC.com. Think beyond the box. Minnesota's Dan Nystrom just kicked a 23-yard field goal to give the Golden Gophers a 27-25 lead over North Carolina State. But after the kick was good which you will see right here watch the interior of the line and what happened next yeah, have a little altercation here higher number 74 gets a little extra curricular activity and the official standing don't do that when you have officials right there well that was ridiculous <laughs> what did you see though terrence holt come over top of that pile he's blocked yes. three field goals this year he was skying over top but, uh, just a little bit of frustration right there now the ball will be teed up at the 20 yard line. When you talk about the difference, this is a difference. When you kick off from the 20, you're lucky to, if you stop them inside their own 40, you're lucky. That's a huge penalty. So Greening is ready with the ball teed up at the 20 yard line. Ray Robinson and Corin Robinson are back inside the 25 for North Carolina State. 
Eleven fifty-seven to play in the fourth quarter. Corin Robinson said, "Hey, I think I want this one." We're both going to want a piece of it. Here's the kickoff by Greening. It's going to land at about the 32-yard line, picked up by Ray Robinson. Corin Robinson will give a block, a little wedge, a little sliver of room, and finally Eli Ward makes the tackle after a 20-yard gain to the 49-yard line of Minnesota. So great field position and a costly penalty thrown on the starting left tackle, Adam Heyer, who is honorable mention all Big Ten this season for Minnesota. Yeah, he's too good a player to have that happen. That's just frustration. Now, for a lineman, that's just a little nudge, you know. But uh, that's, that's a tough call. That's a tough call on him. He's played a good football game tonight. Just don't need that. Glenn Mason, he's seen enough flags. He thinks it's Memorial Day out there. Oh, he is. He is the wow. Gophers have been penalized a lot tonight. 11 times. So here's freshman quarterback Phillip Rivers inside the 49 of Minnesota, down by two. And the handoff to Robinson, who gives to Leak, who pitches back to Rivers, and here's the long pass, and he goes deep down the middle, and oh, just out of the reach of Brian Peterson. Incomplete pass with the razzle-dazzle. Oh. It's got to make you smile to see oh. something like that. It's second down and ten upcoming. Watch this play. You hand off here now. He hands off back. Look at this. Tosses it back out to the quarterback, who makes a great catch. And then he throws it long. And look at this catch right at the tail end. It ain't pretty, but it's right there just about. Credit Minnesota with having two guys yeah. deep back as they were anticipating something. And you saw that nice pitch out by Leak, the wide receiver to Rivers. He was an option quarterback in high school mm -hmm. growing up in Forest Hills, North Carolina. Inside the 49, second down and 10. Shotgun snap by Green. Hit blocked by... Colmer, and there goes Rivers throwing in with a flag thrown on the play. Corin Robinson comes up with the pass, stepping in front of Justin Hall. The gain right now to the 40-yard line. Let's That's, see if they wipe it away. I think it's going to be interference, a defensive interference, because Holt ran down and looked like he was held, and he came back to the football. There's going to be a call. It's right down on that play now. Did he push off, perhaps? Face mask. Hmm. 12 Minnesota penalties. See if we can see it. Bottom down here in the bottom of the screen, going downfield. Oh, there's the face mask right there. Oh, that flag's thrown early. Here, penalty, end of the run. First down. That one goes on Mike Leham. Yeah, what Leham was trying to do is jam him on the line. You try to get that hand into his chest. Got it up in the face mask. The 12 penalties on Minnesota ties a season high. Gophers on top, 27-25. Fourth quarter clock is ticking. North Carolina State with three timeouts, Minnesota with two. Then with the Gopher penalty to the 36. Draw play handoff to Robinson, runs outside, got a good block from Poole. Zigzags the field, grabbed from behind by Justin Hall and swerves to the 23, picking up 13 yards and a North Carolina State first down. Boy, and a good block downfield by Eric Leak. This is just good choice right here. Now, get to the outside. You see the big lineman running them off. Watch number 10 up the top of your screen. He's blocking downfield. You see Corin Robinson, number three, getting a block down there. That's just heads up play. When that's a running play and you see him there wide open, you just start to get a block. Coach Ray Jackson has checked in, the reserve running back. The ball right now is Ray Robinson takes a much-needed breather on the sideline, their leading rusher. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year back in 98 out of Hilton Head, South Carolina. Oh, that's pretty down there. Yeah, it is pretty. From the 23-yard line, first and 10. Jackson in the backfield, three wide receivers for Phillip Rivers. He'll go to the air and go deep down the side for Robinson. Caught touchdown. And a flag is down at the 19. Let's see if it stands. A 23-yard touchdown reception right now. A flag at the 19. He beat Mike Lehan. You know, as we listen to, as we wait for, wait for the call, and obviously it's going to go, and you see all the jubilation is going to go against Minnesota. How many times did I tell you that? Uh, oh, another face mask. Totally is declined. Touchdown. 
Rivers reminds me of Danny Werfel, and nobody threw that fade better than Danny Werfel. That's the exact same thing. Again, try to stick him in the face. This is a fade route. You throw to the corner, allow your wide receiver to get there, and look at that great concentration. You talk about soft hands, he looks it in. You don't throw to the receiver. What you do is you spot. They're going to try for two once again. North Carolina State has their biggest lead tonight, 31 to 27. Robinson has caught seven for 157. And now they try some razzle dazzle. Rivers throws it outside to Peterson. Peterson jetting around, fires a pass in the end zone. May have crossed the line, I think, but there may have been roughing in the end zone as well. Oh, God. It's an incomplete pass in the two point try. Peterson was a high school quarterback out of Clinton, North Carolina. And Brian Peterson, the one that threw that pass, number two. Yeah, it's holding on the defense. Oh. Now, Glenn Mason has just got to be beside himself. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, this many penalties. What a play, though. I mean, what a formation to start. You need to be a rocket science. Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to call the fan. <laughs> to keep on track of what they're doing. Holding. Line of defense. Half the distance to goal line. Repeat the try. So now the ball will be inside the two on the two-point try. Let's see what kind of trickery they pull out of their pocket here. Thank goodness, a conventional setup. Yeah. Rivers will be under center. Gosh, that's surprising. <laughs> Simmons and Robinson will be in the backfield. Rivers will send Peterson, the high school quarterback, in motion. He just threw that pass. Rivers will take it himself. Backpedaling, chased by Schlecht. He's going to get a block from Poole. There's the pass for the two-point try, and he has to throw it away. Looking for Vanderveer, and there's a flag, and Minnesota's Greg oh, White flattens the quarterback after the play. The play was gone. I mean, we're not even talking about clothes. He just laid one on him. And look at Glenn Mason. He's saying, what in the world? It's a dead penalty. Minnesota playing so undisciplined. You better bury your oh, helmet hope. in your hands because you just cost... Now, was it after the play? But it will affect the kickoff. Yeah. If it's after the play, a dead ball. I mean, but it's it, another penalty. Ball. Personal foul against the defense. Penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. 15-yard penalty. Kickoff from the 50-yard line. Golly. I mean, what in the world could he have been thinking of? Well, the, I, you, my eyes went off him, and all of a sudden I saw that flash in the backfield. And look at Glenn Mason. He's giving a gnawing on him. Well, he should. Well, he's he now, should. Yeah. Minnesota led 24 to nothing. Now they trail 31-27 early fourth quarter from Miami. Well, we thought it was Greg White who made the penalty, but one of our cameramen stayed on the quarterback, and this is what happened following that two-point try. It's Karan Riley with a shot. Now we saw Mason yelling at his defensive lineman after the play, and now we know why. Yeah, he was upset. Ron Riley obviously frustrated. We said Greg White, but I think White was right there. He saw him. You can see right there, Riley talking up to the coaches up in the booth. 13 penalties. <laughs> well, they had a 24-0 lead, and everything was going their way. North Carolina State wasn't putting up any kind of fight whatsoever. Then they got the touchdown just before halftime, which spun them in the right direction. In the second half, the third quarter, they outscored Minnesota 17-0. Now they've got a lead of 31 to 27. Well, it's amazing what that little spark can do just before halftime. You go in on a positive note. Had they gone in 24 to nothing, I'm telling you right now, we'd have been striking up the bands and listening to them, but uh, they got renewed. With the penalty now, they tee it up on the 50-yard line. And Herbert will kick off the freshman. And this could be a field goal. <laughs> Is it between, did it get between the, the uprights? <laughs> they have gone between the uprights. But no surprise there. The touchback will bring it out to the 20-yard line. Where Minnesota is going to have to re foolish penalties, a squandered 24-0 lead. And now they've got to bring this young team out on the field and show some composure down by four with under 11 minutes to play. Yeah, and you've got a tired running back who's been your main threat. You've got a quarterback that has not been able to find his best wide receiver. 
And you've got an uphill battle right here, but you've got a good offensive line. They're strong. They can control the line of scrimmage. You've run well. Question is, how much more can tell us Redmond run? Cole tonight, just uh, 10 of 22 for 160 yards. First and 10. It's an end around to freshman Keith Matthews, who runs past the 30 and slides into the Jamison tackle at about the 31 yard line. It's a gain of 12 on the play. No yellow on the field. As Minnesota thanks their lucky stars for that, and it's a first down for the Golden Gophers. Maybe, maybe they can regain some of the composure they showed in the first quarter. Well, that's a good call right there. It's a safe. Get positive yards on it, you move the ball. Now, what you're hoping is that your offense has been over there. They've kind of kind of got their composure in a little bit. They can put some things together, as you say, not have yellow flags. 32-yard line, first down and 10 yards to go for Travis Cole. Hand off to Redmond. Huge hole and finally grabbed by Fisher from behind. Nailed as well by Holt. Gain of 11 on the play up to the 43-yard line. He has been something that North Carolina State has not been able to answer all night long. Cannot stop him. Control him at the line of scrimmage and look at him just burst through right there. I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd take LeVar Fisher and I'd say, hey, listen, that's the man. I want you to just stay right in front of 32. Make him your spy. Yeah, just make him a spy. Just you take him and you take him wherever he goes. First and 10, some breathing space now at the 43-yard line. Redmond again grabbed from behind and brought down Jamison, grabbing his shoestrings and allowing only a gain of four on the play and up to the 48-yard line. Boy, how many Redmond carried the football? You said 33 was his record. I think he's more than 33 tonight. I think he's got 37, 37 carries. Gosh, that's incredible. What a wonderful performance. Yeah. 233 yards. Well, they say after running backs run after the after you run 25 times, you run on heart. And that young man is running on heart. Shy of the 49, second down, short six for Minnesota. Quick throw outside. It's caught by the freshman Tony Patterson, racing down the sideline, belted by Holt. Picks up a first down to the 39-yard line of North Carolina State. It's a gain of 11 on the play. And all of a sudden, Minnesota's got a little bit of bounce in their step. A good play selection. This is that little slip screen. We just throw it out, give them that one-on-one. -on -one. NC State dropping a little bit too much. Gets the first down yardage. They move the stakes. And again, Minnesota getting a little bit of bounce right now. Good play selection. Keeping Really keeping NC State off. Redmond remains from the 39-yard line of North Carolina State. Minnesota with a quick pass outside, caught by Keller, blocked by Matthews, and roughed up at about the 32-yard line by Holton Lyons. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four, and again at the 32 of the Wolfpack. Well, it worked at the top of the screen. It'll work to the bottom of the screen. It's the same exact play. Throw that inside little slot, man. You run the two guys deep, throw it underneath. It's a very safe pass. Second down and four. This Golden Gopher drive began back at their 20-yard line. Nine and a half to play in this fourth quarter. We've had three lead changes in the game. State leading now by four. Second down and four from the 32. Yes! If NC State doesn't come with some pressure. Here comes Fisher. There goes Redman. Flag is thrown offsides on North Carolina State. The block by the freshman wide receiver Matthews. The ball is... I don't think they rule a fumble. They did not blowing it dead at the 24. Gain of nine as it stands now. Boy, and how about a good guess for Minnesota to go to the wide side of the field. NC State brought the backside pressure. They had Fisher to the outside. Again, he jumped off sides, which will not negate the gain. But a good guess by Minnesota. Go away from Fisher. Offside, defense, penalties declined. First down. Good call. Much of the chagrin of Chuck Amato, whose team came back from more than three touchdowns behind to take a lead. But now the lead is at four. 9-16 clock ticking here in the fourth. And NC State just brought in the two starting defensive tackles, Fisher and Bryant. They came back in there. They got a little bit of a rest. 24-yard line, first and 10. Cole throws a pass. Little swing pattern run by Redmond. Brought down beautifully on the play by Coins. He smelled it out and back to the 27-yard line and a loss of a couple on the play. Boy, and Lyons does a great job because what Lyons does, he doesn't go for the fake. But Redmond's just out of gas. Look at this, out in the flat. Now look right there. Try and look at Lyons. Break down. That's fundamentals. And look at that hat right in the middle of the chest. That's the way you tackle. Heavy feet for Redmond. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's getting tired. He's got to be. You count passes. He's got over 40 now. 
Second down, 14 inside the 28th of North Carolina State. Redmond, the call. Where is he getting the things in his yep. tank to run? Breaking tackles outside and put down at the 11 yard line by Adrian Wilson. He's got to be running on fumes. Picks up 16 yards on the play. That was his 258th yard on 39 totes this evening. Watch these legs. Look at this right here. He's just churning. He gets the hole now. He gets outside, breaks a tackle. And now he's off to the running. And look at that. You talk, we talked about heavy legs. He's running on all hard. This may be the best I've ever seen a running back in a college football game do. I've never seen one carry 40 times. In an important game, Fitzpatrick oh. has taken his place from the 11. First down and 10 for Minnesota. Yeah, Otto Fitzpatrick is in the backfield and a well-needed rest by Redmond on the sideline. A little pass to the end zone for Johnson and complete the coverage by Brian Williams. No flag on the play. Incomplete pass. Second down and 10 from the 11. Boy, and Johnson is upset. He was forced out of bounds. Watch this. Good coverage inside. What you do is you force him to the outside. When he comes down with the football, does not get the foot in bounds. You see how he comes down inside? Good coverage. And Johnson got up. I mean, he wanted a penalty. He wanted something. He didn't get it. Hey, Redman had one play off. I bet he's ready to come back. I know he's got a second now. <laughs> Fitzpatrick stays oh, wow. in the game. Two plays down. Patterson, the fourth receiver, second and 10, ninth play of the drive from the 11 yard line. As Cole surveys, changing the play. Hand off to Fitzpatrick, gets a block from Cuppy, and then Jamison busting free, exploding through, makes the stop and no gain on the play. Well, that was a heads up play by Jamison. You're running now. You know what's amazing? I think that Redman was out to get a new chin strap. I think that's why he was out. I saw him adjusting that chin strap. But there's no hole there this time. Good play right there in the hole. Stick him. Come up inside. Drive through. But I really think that number 32 was out because he had a good new. Look how nice and white that chin strap it is. It is. I think you've got a point, Dave. <laughs> Third down and 10. Took a play off. Yeah. 11-yard <laughs> line. Redman again. Gets by Riggs and belts it clear and devoured. Back at the 12-yard line, and North Carolina State's defense does it again. They will limit Minnesota to just a three-point try. Well, good play at the point of attack. What you do is you make them change directions. You get penetration in the backfield. You make them just kind of have to stop and go around. NC State just swarms on them, hold them to a field goal try, and that's what they had to be calling in the huddle because that'll put them up, still up 31-30, even if he makes it. Nystrom has made some from 23 and 27. This will be a 29-yard try. The snap coming from a freshman, Pruden, put down by Greening. The kick is up. The kick is good. And Minnesota is one point away with 6.46 to play. This game has been terrific. The MicronPC.com ball from Miami, North Carolina State by one. Great game here in Miami. Minnesota's had red zone trouble all season long. The first three times they had it tonight, three trips inside the North Carolina State red zone, three touchdowns. But the last three times Minnesota has been inside the 20, they've had to settle for three field goals. Absolutely, and that's the difference in this football game. For Glenn Mason, they had it under control. They put it into idle, and they have not been able to crank it up when they've got inside the 20. For Chuck Amato, that uh, manhood talk. I'd yes. like to, I think that might be taped. Print that. You know, print that and get that down. The manhood <laughs> talk. <laughs> Craig Sager asked him about. If you're just joining us, Minnesota was off to a 24 nothing lead. And then uh, just before halftime, North Carolina State scored. They outscored them with 25 unanswered points to take their first lead. State did. Now it is 31 to 30 with the Wolfpack on top by one with under seven to play. Well, Chuck Amato told us, he said, hey, our motto is finish, and that's what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a fun game to watch. Karan Robinson is back. You know, about all he'd have to do is return one here, and, uh, I mean, that'd be kind of a topper for his night. It would. He's done it before. <laughs> yes, he has. He's the 11th best kickoff return man in college football. The greening kick. Corn Robinson at the seven-yard line. Uh -oh. Wiggling his way up, got a nice block, gets by Eli White, and broke <laughs> down. 
finally, after a 40-yard return, Eli Ward was the one to get him and bring him down at the 48-yard line, and North Carolina State will have great beginning field position. Now watch how many times he changed his direction. There's one. There's a little juke back in there. Now watch, back into the inside. Got to step back inside of him. Now step back inside of him. He's not done yet, folks. He's coming to the outside. Boy, he's exciting. Green, Greening made the tackle as we go downstairs to Craig Sager. Well, after that last penalty on Karan Riley, we saw very clearly that head coach Glenn Mason was giving him an earful. He then came to the sidelines. The defensive coordinator, David Gibbs, is also on the sideline. He chewed him out. Then for about five, ten minutes, Mark Snyder, the defensive line coach, talked to him on the headsets. Now, Karan Riley is an All-American Defensive Player of the Year. He told Mark Snyder on the headset that he was hearing a lot of trash talk from Philip Rivers, and he didn't want to take it. Snyder then told Karan Riley, you're an All-American. You don't need to listen to a freshman quarterback. But what needs to happen, obviously, is they need to regroup, get their focus, because they're making far too many penalties and mistakes. Kevin? Good story, Craig. Thank you very much. The pass just went to Eric Leak. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. Mike Lehan made the Minnesota tackle, and they remain. North Carolina State does at their own 48-yard line. Second down and 10. Robinson and Simmons will be in the backfield, and here comes the Derek Green shotgun snap. Good time, and outside he goes, and it's caught by Tremaine Simmons, and the tackle made by Jimmy Henry all over the play. A loss of one on the play, and Dave, it'll be third down and 11 coming up, and a flag is down. You know, I shall come running from about 20 yards and throw a flag. I'm wondering if he threw the flag on the tackle. Dead ball, personal foul. Oh, it's against NC State. Wow. I guess the officials have had enough. <laughs> but let me tell you about trash talking. I played with a team that trash talked just a little bit. Yeah, the Oakland Raiders. Just are a touch. Yes. I mean, you know, most times we were singing in the choirs on yes, Sunday. I know it. But uh, Dead ball, trash talk. Personal foul against the offense. You have a 15-yard penalty. Well, trash talk doesn't make any tackles. You just can't let that stuff bother you. You can say whatever you want out there, but you put up or shut up. You play the football game. You don't let them, somebody talk you in and out of your game. And I'll just tell you this, Karan Riley is too good a football player to let that happen, especially from a quarterback. I mean, yeah. what's a quarterback going to do? And a freshman quarterback yeah. at that. 20 total penalties in this game. We kicked off. And a little after 7 o'clock Eastern time, we are coming in quickly on four hours. You know, this game went a little bit longer. This could be a two-day game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know about the Florida recount. That took 30, 36 days. Third down and 25. Ball resting at the 33. Third down today, you can see, for North Carolina State. Good time for Rivers down the middle, and it's caught by Leak. Fumbles the ball, picks it back up at the 43-yard line of Minnesota. What is a catch, they say, and a first down. What a throw there by Rivers. He just lays this ball up and over the defense. Watch the, watch the trajectory of this football. Just lay it up. See him right over the middle. He lays it over top of the coverage, right perfectly in the hands. Now the ball gets knocked out there. Leak gets back on top of it. That's a good catch. Fumble and recovery. And he's actually shy. He had the first down yardage. He then fumbled the ball. He had the first down at the 41. He fumbled the ball. He had to leap back on three. So it is fourth down and two yards to go. So the fumble really hurt him. You got to be kidding me. They're going for this on fourth down. Surely they're going to try a hard count trying to draw somebody off sides. 43 yard line. Four and a half to play. Fourth down and two. Uh -oh forced Minnesota to call a timeout. And they've got one remaining. But the fumble really played an effect on that because he was at the 41 with the first down yardage, fumbled the ball, leapt on it back at the 43. Thus, we have fourth and two when we come back. Dave, it's fourth and two for North Carolina State at the Minnesota 43, and they look like they're going to go for it. Uh, they got a quarterback out there. I cannot believe that they're going to go for this. If you don't make it, you give it to Minnesota almost at midfield. See if he doesn't try a hard count, something like that. Surely he's not going for it. Gigantic play, fourth and two. They rearrange rear their tight ends from the 43-yard line, and he sends Peterson in motion. No, he's not going for it. Oh, he almost got the jump there. He did. That, the hard count, the play clock goes yeah. down, delay of game, the call, the move it back five and punt. 
It'll now be fourth and seven. I was going to say, and you know what? He almost got the jump into the neutral zone. And if he snapped it and the guy's not in the neutral zone, yeah. oh, boy. Ben Mesra was the one who just about was caught. Well, how about Rivers? He's fired up. Watch how close this is. Watch right in here. Watch this jump. Oh, right in there. Now, if he snaps it and he's not in the neutral zone, then he's going to give it to Minnesota at midfield. No way would NC State do that. They just could not do that. Now, look at this. Hurry up. How many people does Minnesota have on the field? They may have 12 people out there. Wait a minute. Freshman Austin Herbert, last time he punted, it was down to the five-yard line. This yeah. boot is high. And Redmond will return it from the nine. He's chased by Young. He's grabbed by Patterson and grabbed by the long snapper, Danny Young, who's been all over special teams tonight. A 39-yard punt, an 8-yard return, and he'll be marked down at about the 17-yard line. That's the third time I've heard you call this. <laughs> That's amazing. He's a long snapper, and he goes down and makes a tackle. Great hustle. Why would Redman be back there? First of all, why is he returning a punt inside the 10, well, which you're not supposed to do? Well, that's true. And but why uh, is he back there in well, the first place? Because he's your best running back. Well, Let's face it. All but, right. Uh, Minnesota has one timeout. They'll begin at their 17. And they'll have it first down and 10. Travis Cole hands off to Redman. He's chased and brought down beautifully by Jamison. He's got no legs left. There's no spark. He's down at the 11. Yeah, you saw it exactly what happened when he got when he got out there. He just got tired. But he runs this little dip out to the outside. Watch him right here. He doesn't try to break it right here. Watch this. This is just look at that. You can just see it in his face. It's just go down. Clock continues to tick and approaching three and a half to play. Minnesota with a timeout. Second down 16 back at the 11. The story on Redmond, it's been a historic night for him. Shotgun snap by Hamilton. Here comes Cole. Oh, a fumble. And a fumble on the play. It's loose, as you can see, and recovered by North Carolina State. Picked up, I think, by Corey Lyons. Number 16. And the ball will be spotted at the Minnesota 8-yard line. It's a design quarterbacks that run all the way. See you come up there. Now watch an arm get in there. It just dragged the football out. It was knocked free by Ricky Fowler. Yeah, I believe that was Fowler. And heads up play by Lions. Great hustle to get over there. What an incredible comeback by North Carolina State. The turnover story right there. There's Fowler, number 77. That's a lineman's dream. He's a sophomore getting a chance to get some playing. And he made a huge play. Minnesota is still confused with their defensive personnel. It's first and goal for North Carolina State at the Minnesota 8. Robinson and Simmons in the backfield. Robinson the call, Simmons the block. The dive and the touchdown. And a yard touchdown run by Ray Robinson. His second touchdown tonight. And he's not out of gas. You yeah. see that enthusiasm? You talk about darting in the end zone. Watch Ray Robinson. He's a slasher. Watch him right there. Cut. Now put those feet down and just kind of slide through, break a tackle, stretch to the end zone. He's got a lot of gas in his tank. And for the first time tonight, they're not going to try for two. Their lead right now is seven. This is a huge point by Kent Passingham. With the good snap by Young, the kick is away. Carolina State leads by eight. We have had in this bowl game a 32-point turnaround. Down 24-0, North Carolina State leads it 38-30. to well, Give a lot of credit to those guys up front, Poole, Comer. They get some good blocks. They drive off the line right there. Good drive block to the outside, and then he just makes a slash inside. You got to like that little junior. Boy, I'll tell you one thing. Ray Robinson. Cork screws in. 38 to 30 North Carolina State. And he's got to be wondering, what in the world happened to my 24-0 lead? <laughs> he has to. You know, an interesting thing Chuck Amato told us yesterday when we were in the conversations with him. He said, when I came here, we were fat. We were slow. <laughs> he said, collectively, their team lost 700 pounds. 
and getting into the season. You can see it. Look at the shape they're in. They may have 63 guys, but he's got 63 guys in shape. And that half off, we, we got to find out from yeah. Craig Sager after the game. What we said, it gave him a, a challenge, their manhood talk, but I got, we need to know specifically what Whoa. he said because he was down 24 8 at halftime, 24 0 before that. And now they've come out with an incredible 30 point oh. second half to take a 38 to 30 lead. Redmond is deep back along with Ron Johnson for Minnesota inside the five yard line and freshman Austin Herbert will kick off from the 35. Minnesota with one timeout, State with three. And what a difference in the composure of the people. Oh. Every <laughs> NC State fan is up in red screaming and yelling and Minnesota fans are over there just sitting there saying, what happened? This great, what happened. great kickoff by Herbert and they'll leave it in the end zone. Ron Johnson to a knee. Now Travis Cole has his work cut out for him. Not only do they have to get a tuck, but they've got to get a two-point yes, on top of did. that just to tie. North Carolina State's defense has been very tough. They've only allowed six points in this second half. They really responded. Played well, played hard, made some heads-up plays. When everything was going wrong in the first half, everything has gone right in the second half. And there's one of your leaders. You know when you get tired and you get in that huddle, you look around for somebody that leads, that's a guy whose motors never, he never runs on half speed. From the 21st and 10 pass to freshman Tony Patterson, runs to the sideline, belts it out of bounds by Brian Williams. It's a gain of five on the play, up near the 25-yard line. Clock is stopped with 303, and again, the Gophers with one timeout. Well, I keep on thinking, you know, when I when you get in a situation like this, you look for top players. They've got one in Ron Johnson. He hasn't had a good night tonight. They haven't been able to find him a lot, but he is a threat anytime. If he gets in that one on one situation, he can be deadly. Second down and five from the 25 outside. They go again. And once again, it's Patterson grabbed from uh, down low by James Walker picks up five gets close to a first down at the 30 yard line. We'll have to see where they spot the ball. But it would appear, as the clock is stopped at 2.54, that he probably has it. Well, that's one thing. When In college football, when you move the chains, you stop the clock. And that's almost like a timeout because you can get up on the line, you can get ready to go. The referee gives the official, and now you're all set. It doesn't take many seconds to start a play. From the 30, first and 10, the clock at 2.45 and ticking. And here comes Cole with the pass. Oh. Down the middle, and what a catch is made by Ryan Keller. Good for 16 yards. At the 45-yard line, that pass right on the money. His fifth catch tonight for 51 yards. Inside receiver, watch this. Just cut inside, and it's a rope. This may be the best throw that Travis Cole has thrown tonight. It was just a rope, a dart right in the injured player down. It is uh, Corey Lyons, who was writhing in pain a second ago as they assist him at about the 48-yard line. 2.40 left with Minnesota and a timeout. And down by eight. How fitting would it be to go to overtime? <laughs> <laughs> it would be fitting. Watch the tail end right there. You see number 16 coming in right there? Gets that shot. Oh, he gets hit with a foot up in the groin area. Oh, boy. Right up in the lower stomach. Ouch. That it, it does knock the breath out of you. Oh, yes, it does. It does, I can does, tell you that. It does knock the breath out of you. Well, if you, if you had to have a cool customer, and that's what Glenn Mason told us. He said Travis Cole's a, he's a cool customer in this situation. He has no memory. He can throw the football. He's got some, he had some great stats. In that Iowa game, he was, what, 23 of 38 for mm -hmm. almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. Nothing is more in this series right here. They, have, they cannot give the football up. He was a very good high school basketball player in... Oregon, Lake Oswego, Oregon, played junior college football, Cole did, at Foothill Junior College in Los Altos Hills, California. And while they've got the injury timeout, he's going to sneak a quick talk upstairs with the coaches, and you can see him right there in the box. You know, it almost looked as if he's saying they're covering to the outside. Look for those crossing patterns over the middle. See if they don't come across in that post pattern area. Good to see Corey Lyons up Oh, he made a big play. That fumble recovery was huge. It was. It set up a touchdown that is the biggest lead that North Carolina State has had tonight. You can see him just in anguish on the sideline. Now, 
Minnesota, we get back to it. First and 10 from the 45. Cole, dragged off, running into his own blocker. Ryan Roth, Ricky Fowler, completely shuts down the play with the handoff going to Redmond. Loss of three on the play, make it four, back to the 41. What really caused that, Shane Riggs got some great penetration in there and knocked the tackle back. Oops, Oops somebody's off sides and it appears to be Corey Smith oh. is uh, higher. The left tackle was moving and that's what Smith was pointing to. Another offensive line penalty. Well, you go on movement if you're a defensive lineman. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, you have five yard penalty, first down. 15. That's now tough to overcome. second 19 from the 36. Cole Force from the pocket, grabbed and brought down by Shane Riggs. The first sack tonight given up by the offensive line. First sack tonight by North Carolina's number now that Minnesota had only allowed 20 sacks all season long. Well, it's interesting what NC State did that time is they did what we call a twist. The two tackles came down inside, the ends looped around them and they got great penetration. It's the first time they had tried that tonight. Now third and 25, back at the 31-yard line. Cole, rush comes on, sacked again for a second consecutive time. Coming in, Jamison Locklear, along with Corey Smith. What a jump Corey Smith got on the outside, number 48. He guessed and he guessed right. Look at him outside there. He gets up and bang, he makes that tackle. Just a great guess on the snap count. He got a run, went right around the tackle. And a player is down for the University of Minnesota at the 21-yard line. Boy, if you're going to guess, you want to guess right. It's exactly what Corey Smith did on that play. Guess the snap count, penetration. I think it might be the quarterback. I don't see him out there right now. Well, Cole got sandwiched that time. He got high load. Watch this. From the other side, he's going to get hit also right there and there. So he goes down. Well, that's a hit. Now you've got your backup quarterback. He's going to have to come in. They're looking at his left knee right now, and you can oh, see yeah. why it yeah. crumbled under him. And I think there was also a face mask on that tackle as well. And they start to get ready now on the sideline. Freshman Hassan Abdul Khalik, who began the season as the outright starter and threw three touchdown passes his very first game. But then he was yanked after four games for Travis Cole. But this is the kid that Glenn Mason really likes and obviously is the future at the position for the Golden Gophers. So think of the situation he's in. He's got fourth down and about a mile to go. He hasn't been able to throw on the sideline. He hasn't even warmed up. He did not throw a pass over there. Just came right on out. Talk to Glenn Mason. You almost see it in Glenn Mason's face. He's saying, oh, this is a tough situation. He looks pretty calm, though, in this situation, but he's got to throw a big one. He was a high school All-American quarterback, went to prep school for a year, then redshirted in 99 and played this year. As you see, the hobbling starting Minnesota quarterback, Travis Cole, being taken off the field. Well, you stop and think about where he has to get to. He has to get to the 45-yard line of NC State. So what do you do if you're NC State? Drop him back. Let him catch it in front. And look, look how far back yeah, yeah. they got the safety net back there right now. The center fielders are in. And by the way, we are in the home of the uh, Major League uh, Baseball Marlins. Fourth down and 34. Now, Chuck Amato and his staff had a chance to tell their defensive secondary, let them catch it short, get on them, bring them down short. If they bring them down anything outside the 45-yard line, Abdul Khalik with the rush coming on, a block by Fitzpatrick and a long high pass downfield and intercepted at the 37 yard line. It's picked off on the play by Clayton White. His first interception of the season. And that may have sealed it for North Carolina State, 112 to play and Minnesota down by eight points. Boy, and this ball could have gone either way. <laughs> oh, they just got him with the water. <laughs> yeah, get him with the water. Watch this. It's high. Watch right about the 40-yard line. Look at this. It's a jump ball. Now look at the tip right there. Oh, right in the middle. Johnson had his hands on Ron it. Johnson did have his hands on it. You're exactly right. Johnson was up there. He was right there. I'm not so sure that ball wasn't stolen out of his hands. 
This is the fifth time this season that Minnesota has blown a second half lead against Ohio State, Indiana, Northwestern, and Wisconsin. And now Rivers will go to a knee. Minnesota has one timeout remaining, and the clock is ticking, and there's no indication that the Golden Gophers are going to try to stop it. There's your starting quarterback who is on the bench and hurt moments ago his left knee. What a tough day for him. Had everything going right for him. I mean, had the running game. They just uh, they just ran out of gas. Hate to say it, but uh, you drop back in this formation right here, and this is just this is the protection man right there in case there's a bad snap or something. That's the famous New York Giants. Remember that when the ball was yes, snapped yes. up there and Herman Edwards. Yeah, exactly. Against the Philadelphia Eagles. Joe Pisarchik. Yep. Former Missouri quarterback, and down goes Rivers. Minnesota's not going to stop. They had a 24 to nothing lead, and they lose it 38 to 30. There were, at one time, 25 unanswered North Carolina State points. And Chuck Amato with an incredibly inspired halftime talk with his team down at the half, 24 to 8, has brought him back from the dead with the freshman quarterback leading the way, the former high school player in the state of Alabama, playing in North Carolina and leading his team his freshman year to a bowl win. Let's go downstairs to Craig Sager. Well, Coach, we talked to you at halftime. You weren't happy with your team. You chewed them out. What do you think of them now? I want to go kiss them all. <laughs> I'm Italian. I'll get chapstick lips from kissing them so much. I'll tell you what, it was a uh, give the credit to the kids. And, the, and I did. I chewed their butts out at halftime and they came back out. The last three times Minnesota got down there in the red zone, they came away with three field goals. And then the kicking game, which we talked about yesterday, is what won the game. You challenged their manhood at halftime, you told us. Without being too graphic, what did you say? Just what you said. I'm not going to go any further. <laughs> okay, at the beginning of the year, the first time you saw your team, you said a lot of people at this time of the year don't like to be told that they're not in as good a shape as they used to be or they put a little few pounds on at the holidays. But you told your team straight out, you guys are the fattest team I've ever seen. They responded, lost 700 pounds. How much of the fact did that play in this game, the way they were held up their stamina? Because I, I think it helped their mental toughness that they, they just felt good about themselves now. We, if we can get into the fourth quarter in every game this year, we had a chance. The two, the one game that you know, that we lost, a couple games we lost, rather, we, we didn't get that way. But they, they just believed that if they could get that far, they would condition the other teams. And uh, whether it was true or not, uh, we, we made them believe that. Well, you challenge people, they listen, I know that. After 25 bowl games as an assistant coach, your thoughts on taking the head coaching job now and the great job you guys did winning this one here tonight? Uh, now somebody can pinch me. The season's over. It's been a dream. It's, it's been unbelievable. And, and, and I give all the credit to the assistant coaches and the way they got these young men ready to play. I pinch you. You probably challenged my manhood or tell me to lose weight, but congratulations. <laughs> Let's go back to Kim. Minnesota, on the other hand, has blown another second-half lead. It wasn't Ohio State. It was Ohio. They lost a second-half lead to. They lost a lead to Indiana, Northwestern, Wisconsin. And tonight leading 24-8 in the second half. They blew a 16-point lead. North Carolina State comes back even on a record-setting night by Tellus Redmond with 246 yards. State 30, Minnesota 30.